for the try to What in God's name is going on in here? What was that ruckus? Uh, what ruckus? I was just in my office and I heard a ruckus. Could you describe the ruckus, sir? Okay, here's what I would have done. Bro, no one cares what you would have done. Actually, everyone cares. Welcome to Let Me Book the Territory, the podcast made for smart marks and nostalgia nerds. Brought to you by the Embrace the Turn Up Podcast Network. And now your hosts, A-Dub. E-B-A. E-Ray. I wasn't going to say nothing at all. Um, yeah, were, were you not? Well, um, but we're here now. Hey, double or nothing. Is that what Dub's uh, PIB exactly. weekend was like? It was, was, exactly. was he just like doubling up on on tall boys and getting no ass? That's what I think of you, Dub. That's what I think of you, buddy. But again, it's not about what I think. It's about what the people think. Because we are the people's pot. And guys, this is another episode of let me book the territory the greatest wrestling podcast of all time the voice you hear currently is i e ray the quasi bad guy the diet coke of evil the man of seven eight teeth american cream brody loads teen malenko at your service and i would be nothing if i did not have my comrades with me so i roll with a gang much like aj styles and we are phenomenal uh before we kind of get into this thing. Let me introduce the the gentleman. If you've never heard this show, um, we got a guy here. And this dude likes to drink. He likes to sink himself in a weird tub of fluids, um, usually with other women that have not had their shots that do take their clothes off for money. This oh, guy's really? the most constipated man in the universe. Well, it's the dub show. Uh, <sighs> yeah. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. A dub in the building, fresh from Dub in Bay. We're gonna just rename the place. Uh, vacation <laughs> was great. I got my voice back 30 minutes ago. So we are here. And what do you guys wanna talk about? <laughs> well, we got plenty of things to talk about. Uh, I would love to start to discuss your um, journey to Tapioca Town, <laughs> but that's for another podcast. Before we get there, the mayor of Tapioca Town, the guy who does it all, but he keeps it bald, the man that has a beard, but he really likes to get weird. This is B-A-D-B-I-C himself, B-A Bigelow. My guy, B.A., what's going on, brother? What is good, fellas? It is I, as the man said, B.A. DiBiase, a.k.a. Black IRS, a.k.a. the Beef of the East. B.A. Bigelow in the building, stomping and dropping all over the place. What's happening? I don't know why he turned into a black preacher, but I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I had to get my growing up voice up. Right. And uh, pass that black, question. Black, black, black Bigelow over here. Right, black, <laughs> black, black Goliath. <laughs> um, well, gentlemen, uh, everybody that's listening to this, we are ready to like talk about the immense amount of wrestling that we have come upon the last weekend it's so much literally so much wrestling it was huge so much it was just too intense we had all of the ple's some shit we ain't even watch roh and it's just <laughs> you know we try our best we can only do so much we're only 3 mb like 30 three matches on that card black. man yeah, I, look. Yeah, I, I, didn't didn't count it. I counted. It was twenty-seven. That's it was twenty-seven. Ridiculous. I counted. I, I got tell you what. Real life stuff going on. Out I here. tell you what. If you if you're upset that we're not going to talk about ROH, 
just keep listening because maybe at the very end of the pod we will talk about it like literally two minutes left we may talk about <laughs> roh just keep listening straight i tell you i'll tell you what guys if you like subscribe and leave us a five-star review we will all go back and watch that ROH pay per view, and we will give you a full review on it. Yep. Next if week, one person does that. <laughs> one, one. Just and one. We will scour one the one. platforms. I will, will check every single day. One. We'll do it, and we'll advertise it. Look, I usually advocate for uh, the five star review. In this case, don't do this because <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't want to do it. But if you do, I'm a man of my word, so I definitely will do it. Um, Twenty-seven speaking, matches. That that's a lot. We might need to get Red Bull on as a sponsor for that, man. <laughs> Jesus. That's Red tough. Bull, Monster, um Bang, Rockstar. Bang. bang. <laughs> like all this bang. Shit. All the shit I don't drink that can make my heart explode. But <laughs> um guys, let's not waste any more time. This is not the normal podcast that you're used to. We are going to really go into these PLEs and probably these PLEs alone. There was not much that happened this week of like actual wrestling shows because it's still fallout happening. So the important shit is on these actual like main shows. So we're going to start there. First and foremost, uh, I know this might come to a, as a shock to like most people who are fan favorites and familiar with this. Let me book the territory brand. But you know what? Enough is enough. And it's time for a change. Guys, we are about to start the show talking AEW double or nothing. That was live. Live in Las Vegas. (laughs) Vegas, Um, baby. Guys, uh, first and foremost, I want to start off by saying interesting, interesting, interesting uh, show. It was long per usual. I think that's just AEW's thing because they only have a pay-per-view once every like quarter moon <laughs> i don't know blood moon or some shit but yeah it was a lot of matches on it uh y'all want to just run through the card give give thoughts as we go sound this good did yeah. we go through the whole card or you know i didn't... oh yeah do we do we need <laughs> well, do we need to I'll... talk about adam cole versus chris jericho and sabu doing spots like i told y'all oh, i gotta take a shot Oh, didn't oh. I say last week? It's not who did a spot. Oh. I think I said that. They ain't bring him here for no reason. <laughs> now, he, yeah, they were like, "We gonna pay you." Tony was sitting there like a like a pimp. He was like, "If we go pay you, you gonna do some tricks, so, David." I guess we're 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 starting there. Excuse me. Sabu came out and uh, in the match and fell off the top rope into a table, and I was like. <laughs> Damn. I was so angry. I was like, really? This is how y'all start this off? This this I, broken down, man. I hope he got it. I hope he got really paid. That's all I'm gonna say. I mean, when he wasn't making much at all, any payday is getting paid. So we'll start <laughs> there. But um realistically, yeah. the let's let's not even talk about the match because the match was a, a, a man to me. Um, let's talk about the two things that matter here. One, the diminishing quality and like meaning of Chris Jericho matches in any he, thoughts he's that? starting to feel like you're like your gatekeeper feud he's he's becoming the thing that Cody didn't want to be when Cody left don't want to be that gatekeeper of you know upper mid card to you know high card level and he's becoming that and so like now he's getting to these matches like you what well this guy looks like he's poised for you know some special shit so Chris is clearly going to lose, and like the diminishing return for the Chris, for the society is what is what's really interesting because he's not elevating any of these guys anymore. I was no. going to say Daniel uh, Garcia is dead on arrival right now. Jake Hager, uh, yeah, let me <laughs> start on Jake Hager. Um, doing a sex dance, I don't. Know. That shit is terrible. Like, Two point might want to go back Some to doing a YouTube like it, show. Um, hey, the bitches love it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, you heard it first, bitch. <laughs> you love it. Say it's BA. BA tell you what you love. You love it. You um, love it. Outside of that, um, Action Andretti. Where is he? Wait, is he in the Jericho Appreciation but, Society? He no, he, him. he wasn't elevated. Again, I'm talking about, you're talking about oh, the people who's in oh. the JS. I'm talking about 
period people he's he beating, with him. They, it's not doing anything anymore it's like where's eddie kingston oh he took his ball Where is home. Eddie was, he said fuck y'all let me know when fight forever comes out i'll play that shit on my ps2 <laughs> <laughs> with his dangling wood cross rosary hanging over his control over his dual yeah. shock one yeah i know it's, it's crazy um yeah like ha- I- has the jericho feud worked for anybody except for mjf since he's been there honestly i don't know if it worked for mjf i think mjf was just already there i think once upon a time it did it did something for uh moxley because it was like brand new company. Um, it did. Damn. It did do anything for Ricky Starks at all? No, that was already on the decline. And that's what I, I was getting at. At this point, like it's so many things that's wrong with it. And we're going to get to it shortly. But um, even like the people that are supposed to be in the JS, like I don't know what's going on with uh, Sammy Guevara and what he's like not associated with them anymore but i don't know again this is the problem with aew as a whole uh just kind of a repetition of things that we don't need or we didn't ask for and i say we meaning the the um when, when it comes to voting what do you call those people it's like we're not Delegates. republicans we're not democrats we're like the oh the the swing voters Swing oh, swing that's what it looks like. Oh, like okay. we can People be that swayed. don't have a party. Yeah, they don't have a party yeah. affiliation. They just kind of We can be wanna... swayed to watch some AEW. But if you keep giving me with shit, like the wrestling's always going to be good. And you, look, <laughs> I was like, I, I can't even think. The wrestling is usually really good I in ring you. quality. <laughs> but the, the storytelling and how we get there is usually so convoluted and bad that it takes away from it. So I'll say this, that that match didn't do much for me at all. Even though I love Adam Cole, I couldn't match. He's floundering, bro. He's floundering. It's how he they need to come home. Him. He need to come home. I, I know I know those guys are his friends, but he got to come home. Question really quickly before we move on. If he comes home, does he get an invite for a plus one? Ooh. I'm, I'm, I'm Better question. No. Unless who's he, ta- he's... who's he who's he taking as his plus one? Um, his girlfriend. His wife, I was wife, about to course. say like, his, his, his oh, girlfriend oh, Riley. Riley. I forgot. <laughs> Dub doesn't have a woman. He doesn't know how this goes. He has no relationship experience. Say, but his girlfriend is a floundering there. Exactly. But she's, that's why I said. That's, that's but, what I'm, unless he said that you got to leave. Like Roddy not gonna be a top guy, and we all know Roddy never going back. But Roddy ain't, I mean, that's the thing, And Cole has always said, wherever I go, Rod- Roderick Strong got a place. I mean, he got a place, but whether he wants to go or not, I think Roddy will be fine in AEW. But I'm saying Britt Baker, she's not floundering, but she's not, like, not doing killing it. it right now. She's just kind of there. But and that, she's, that's the, that's she's the like, thing, E-Ray. Like, she's one of those people, like, you look at her in AEW, like, oh, she's overrated. But, yeah, she's... She's at the top of the car because they want her there, not necessarily because she's getting everything over. So why why go I, somewhere else and have to work hard to get to the top of the car when so you can just be placed there? I'll disagree. I don't think that she's overrated. I think she's good. She's a good character. She is a, a good worker. I just think their usage of like everybody is kind of meh sauce. So it's like, oh, okay, we're, we're trying but we're not necessarily executing all the time. And she, for some reason, she's kind of like this awkward baby, but they have like two women stables kind of where the main woman isn't the one that's holding the belt. We'll get there in a second. So it's just a weird thing which rinse, wash and repeat. And they just kind of have involvements with different people instead of like, nothing's clear. And as we speak, it's just been announced Chris Jericho and Soraya versus Adam Cole and Britt Baker tonight. Somebody wants that. It's not me. But neither here nor there. What was, was the next match on the card? Let's see what it's worth talking about. Uh, FTR defeated Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. Feel free to talk about that. I, I can't talk about Jeff Jarrett in 2023. I can't. Why not? He's everywhere. Uh, Fuck you, BA. <laughs> I, I say, I say that with love. 
I know I you do, but he's literally everywhere. That's all I'm saying. VA, do you have anything impactful to add to this? Uh, not really. I mean, Jeff Jarrett does what he does. He, he knows how to piss people off, i.e. dub. Still get a check. And get a check. Yeah, man. I can't hate on the man. And he's doing what all pro wrestlers want to do when they grow up. Figure I don't out hate on him. I just hate him. That means it works. But that kind of, <laughs> right. I mean, you, he's living rent free in your hair right now. Him. Yes. Yes, so much so that Jeff Jarrett can be found on the side pod for Nostalgia Talk and here. So, yes, yeah. I don't have much to say, okay. though. You know, FTR is my guys. Anytime they, okay. they win, I'm, I'm let, happy. Let me, let me give it to y'all because I, I feel like y'all are holding back here. And I, I got I to round this home. <laughs> I'll let y'all do the heavy lifting. Um, Jeff Jarrett, this match was fine. It, it wasn't it anything good. wrong with it except for the fact that it was overbooked as hell. And I was like... I didn't need all this shit. It was a lot of wild yeah, why, shit. Why was Mark Briscoe there? Like, why, why do we need He's that? A special guest referee to give him something to do. I feel like they feel bad for him because of what happened. So they keep throwing I'm, him in these spots. I agree, but give him a single push. There. Yeah. Why hasn't can't he, he why been, hasn't he been a world champion? Hasn't in he been minor, like always absolutely. world champion? Like twice? One of the longest reigns ever, if, I'm, if memory serves me correctly. I don't know that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't go that far, but no. you guys. Hey, that that's for y'all to decide and debate. My quantum know. leap machine does not go to that dimension of Ring of Honor, <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> Never traveled. You, those you didn't go to that part of the multiverse. Oh man, I don't that's know. That's the multiverse of madness. That's by the black like, hole of oh. the galaxy, so we don't get too close. Or it's we won't an come back. He's out of there. Um, I'll <laughs> say no this. Hangs over there. No, nope, not going I, there. I'll Hell say no. this. Um, yeah, didn't need his his. I don't know whether he is a referee or because they end up needing another referee. Aubrey, he just left. Aubrey's so and so came out, and then she ended up taking the a guitar shop from Jeff Jarrett's wife. And I was like, "Well, that was extra stuff." Like it's just a lot of shit that I was. Like, I do. I, I do know. have a question about uh, Miss Aubrey Edwards. Um, she she, yeah. she had, seems to be a lightning rod on wrestling conversations yeah about her do y'all think she'd be doing too much in the ring like most people seem to think i don't care no. she's a ref no i just i just fucking think cares. Like, I, why? I have never paid attention to her like other people have this is some of this, this is the problem like this is not meant to be a w critique we're trying to start off with the show but i have <laughs> why to we don't it. do it this is yeah this is probably right but the fans it's something with the fans that are if y'all paid half as much attention and gave as much scrutiny to a referee that you hate to the shitty storytelling that this company does quite often you will probably have a better product but the fact that you're so happy with just getting anything served on the plate uh to you by tony khan they got a tk on it that you're satisfied and you'll just take your anger out on the woman ref well, it's a woman. She's refereeing. She's, She's sliding too, too hard. She's it making too like, many facials. It sounds like bitchless behavior to me. I I don't know. I could mm. be tripping. Mm. Hey, I I don't know. I mean, I it, just sure sound, it just sounds like bitchless behavior to me. Hey, I don't know. I can't. I won't even classify it as that because I'm sure it's some AW females out there as well. Women wrestling fans that are hating on her too. I don't get it. They but. cannot be getting bitches too. True. That's Scaring true. the hoes is not gender specific, E. No, and this not. is what the AEW fan that hates on Aubrey Everett does on a daily Get basis. The they be out here just scaring the hoes. That's why SummerSlam weekend is going to be so much fun because we're going to be the normal niggas in the sea of weirdos that be out here scaring the hoes. <laughs> well said. Well said. I can't argue with any of that. Um, Yep, as we expected, uh, the greatest tag team that y'all love so much retained. Uh, FTR Living Legends, cool. God damn it. Next, <laughs> Wardlow Next. beats Chris Jericho in the ladder match for the TNT Chris title. Jericho. Not, Christian not Chris Cage. Jericho. Christian oh my Cage. Gosh. I'm sorry. Too many, too many C's, triple C's. No Rick Ross. Yeah. Um, Get the C's out your mouth. Um, oh. <laughs> mommy. Um, so <laughs> this was probably the best Warlow match he's ever had in AW. 
and I still did not care. <laughs> I love Why is Luchasaurus hey. still heel? And why is he wearing spikes now? Did he like Christian evolve? like made him this way. He like he brought evolved. him back this oh, way. He's a Pokemon. Is a Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. He's like Lucha. He's like, he didn't like... watch it in the beginning. He was Luche. There you go. <laughs> it's Jay Luche. And then, became, and then became Luchasaur when he was a Jungle Boy, and now he's full Luchasaurus. Yes. Yep. I'm good. Luchasaur. Final form. Use Vine Whip. Yeah. <laughs> now he's Luchasaurus. 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 Use random heel turn. So I got a better question for you. <laughs> um, what was the uh, original version of Arn Anderson? Uh, the Yeti from WCW in the mid '90s, uh, uh, evidently. Uh, oh, your turn! <laughs> and then he evolved into Arn Anderson. I think Arn Anderson was involved in that match. He might have got bit low key, and it's like one of those like dormant viruses. And oh, came active in 2023. Is Arn Anderson patient zero? Is <laughs> technically speaking. Y'all just turned Arn Anderson to scabies. <laughs> like, ah, ah. Arn Anderson in Outbreak 2. HPV. <laughs> HPV. Ah. Uh, I can't understand. I Anybody want to tell me why Arn Anderson ate Luchasaurus's finger? He oh. telegraphed it, too. Like, you could tell he has something in his mouth the whole time. It was so weird. I'm hey, like, bro. Nope, I'm, not, I'm not here for that. Watching. I'm not here to pick him apart. I just want to know why he ate it. You don't have to talk to who booked it, brother, because I got nothing if I can't critique it. Because they don't have any quality <laughs> control in that place. I got nothing. Hey, Arn Anderson, the guy who's my... not wearing any mask and talks about blowing people's heads off if they try to <laughs> rob him. Go out there and eat a man's thumb. <laughs> like, no continuity. But he did it. Uh, Christian Cage, amazing sweaters. Always. Uh, turtleneck, fire. Love turtleneck it. Turtleneck mafia. And uh, I mean, the match was fine. It it just, I don't get pop from Wardlow, number one. Number two, for the TNT title. Middle field. It would have been, <laughs> this is what I think. What they should have done, this is in retrospect, booking the territory. Um, they should have never took the belt off of Powerhouse Hobbs. And they could have built it all the way until just now at Double or Nothing. And then had to blow off there. They had the, the thing where he ruined the car. And apparently the belt got stolen. All this stuff was all fodder for this one feud. For some reason, he lost in like a week and a half, two weeks. He was like, oh, okay, why do I care anymore? Because this title gets hot potato back and forth and it's stupid. So I'm trying to find a reason to care, but Wardlow ain't it for me. Um, good for him. He retained, but it just didn't pop me. I wasn't excited. Um, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get some good stuff out here. I'm trying to get some energy from you guys. Y'all don't give a fuck about the last two nothing. matches. Let's just keep it a buck. The last two matches is the only thing worth talking about. Let's keep this. Am I uh, lying or no? A little bit, because we have Jade Cargo. Okay. She had her AKA entrance. That was Jesus cool. Christ, guys. Is there a fan in the house? Is there a house? Is there a house in the house tonight? This nope. show was mid as fuck to me. I'm sorry, bro. Right. I'm well, keeping it a buck. The last two matches was dope to me. The four pillars match was just a fucking spot fest. And then oh, okay, okay. Well, but we, we can there. talk through about. It. I'm just okay. telling you why the energy's okay. low, bro. Okay. Well, is Tony we Storm over him. enough to have beaten Jamie Hader for this title? Why is Chris Statlander coming back and beating Jay Cargill in 48 fucking seconds? Because I'm. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying. That's to what I'm saying. This. Like, okay, why did so I? Did y'all? Did you watch? I saw yeah, this match. I, yes, I, I, I saw, saw this clips. match. Yes. Okay, I saw this match. We got Jay Cargill, fifty nine and zero, versus uh, Taya Valkyrie. Did you? You didn't give a shit about hey, the match. Can we? I'm can assuming. we? We can literally we the, saw it like two weeks ago. That's can why we have I didn't the Taya care. Valkyrie discussion the same time we have the page discussion. I'm just speaking on the match. We saw this match like two or three weeks ago on Dynamite. We did. I swear yeah. to God, I was sitting here recording the show and saw it. <laughs> That's why I'm like, I don't <laughs> care. Thing. Right. So, That's why so I'm we like, knew I... she was a winner. And then, exactly. but the Statlander comeback pop is what got them. To me, I thought this was a great booking job. So I tell me why I'm wrong, guys. 
I wasn't as upset as it seems to be my comrade Dub is, but I get both sides of it. I'm in my in my personal opinion, I was waiting for Jade to lose it so Jade can kind of change her trajectory as far as like, all right, now she has something that she can actually go after again instead of just this undefeated streak for just because they don't know what else to do with it. So I'm curious what they're gonna do with her and Chris Statlander, but for Jade to lose like that. It's just, it didn't make sense to me. It should have been more of a match, but I get why, hey, she just had a match sneak in. She wanted to take open challengers, squash her in justification from the backstage aspect. But I feel like it could have been done better, but I'm not going to rip it to shreds. Statlander return and then build to something. You know how many special episodes of Dynamite we're going to get this summer in between their next pay-per-view? Hold I on agree with Jay then. And then have Jay get ready to go chase tony or whoever they hot shot that women's title to like i i don't know i, I just don't like it I, I agree with that too that could happen like, but i i don't i see and why it doesn't make it, sense though. for me that to have jay do an open challenge after she had a damn near 10 minute match with tyra valkyrie you do an open challenge after you squash somebody well, like okay Rhea well, should do open challenge after she squashed natalia okay well let, let me let me shoot up some bell here because this is where it comes from when you didn't see it so the thing here and why I, I like the 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 pop or the uh the surprise of it, if you will, is mainly because she just disposed of Ty Valkyrie, like get you out of here. I'm 60 and 0. I can't be beaten. It's like when you beat a nigga in Madden and you just destroying his ass. And you're like, I, I, let me just throw a Hail Mary. <laughs> let me run off streaks or five play straight because you don't fucking care shit. no more exactly and it's like that's her ego that's her thing and then of course uh smart mark calloway is like yeah we can't be beat. we'll do it anytime any place anywhere blah 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 and then all of a sudden that's when you get the chris statlander comeback bam and it like make this and she's like wait what but that's what happened and then her to get get the moves off i think personally it worked in both of their favors it makes jay look huge she got the big entrance that was a thing that people talked about then i was like wait jay lost that brought people who weren't gonna ever watch double or nothing to watch double or nothing it it seemed like it worked number one number two chris statlander not being healthy or not staying healthy almost ever for her to have a comeback immediately with the title change, I know it could have been better. They could have been like, oh, let's build a feud and blah, blah, blah. Great, but now oh, you're risking. Tell wait, wait, wait. a story. That's crazy, right? Wait, wait. No, no. <laughs> but it's also scary because Tony Khan is terrified of what? Having more fucking injuries ruin his life. Because this whole company had been plagued by mad injuries that have changed and altered all of their plans. So when they try to do long-term booking they're like oh yeah so then we're gonna have cm punk go against oh his foot rips off oh god and when we're gonna have uh kenny omega oh gosh he's dead <laughs> i think and that's more of a attestation of work rate in the ring versus booking like you can book i mean the way these dudes work on a weekly basis as far but as the brutality those things, but those things go hand in hand pa because again if you're booking something and they're wrestling in the ring guess what happens while you're booking it, they get hurt. You've booked it out for this long. Now you got to scrap all that shit. Yeah, I mean, so that's Stadler what they cannot did. do four fifties, and Kenny cannot wrestle in twenty five different promotions. But you that's know. what I'm saying. Like, there's other factors we could control instead of like saying, "Let's not have a long story because I'm afraid of my wrestlers getting hurt because I let them do whatever they want to do." That's the problem. To be I mean, completely honest, sure, it it could be, but it's a it's a absolute factor of why I think that that happened. So it's like, you know what? Let's get to cheap pop. Let's do it. It blew people up. Chris Statlander has already been deserving of a title shot because she's been fantastic when she is available. Bam. Now you can start building around this few. I'm hoping they go in the direction of having, hey, these two interact and have something. And then maybe they already did something with another call out where they, I hope they don't just move Jade along. That would annoy me because then that devalues the TVS belt. But that's another story. But that's what I'm just saying. I feel confident about this as far as them making the switch there because I was like, wait, she lost? Oh, shit. I'm going to tune in. And a bunch of other people I seen on, on the timeline saying the same thing. I was like, oh, shit. Well, let's see this now. First, I seen the AK entrance. I was like, 
everybody's popping for that. Was that cool? That's great. Like we've seen it. We've seen it. I was about to say, if you're, you've seen it before. I got you. But on this <laughs> stage, uh, I, I get it. I'm not yeah, shitting on it, but not shitting on it either. But, but it's just like, okay, it, it, that's fine. And the white people are confused. Like, what's this she's doing? Oh. Okay. Yeah, Caucasians just getting outed everywhere. That's more of what is fun to see. Like, just Caucasians <laughs> get drugged because they don't understand what's happening. That's the fun part, that kind of stuff. But, but yes. <laughs> uh, anywho, I, I didn't mind it. Chris Statlander is our new TBS champion. And uh, I'm hoping there is a feud that continues to brew through this and they don't just move her on to uh, the next uh, women's championship, which also happened. Tony Storm versus uh, Jamie Hayter. And I'm a big hater guy. So, Dub, I know you didn't see it, but tell me why Jamie Hayter losing this belt was the worst thing that you could imagine. Because Tony Storm is not even the leader of this faction of Outcast, even though they were all, you know, I, uh, uh, He's like. He's such a hater. <laughs> He's such a hater. <laughs> Just, I love it. It just doesn't make sense to me. Like, Jamie oh, Hayter is your, your over homegrown champion who also is still kind of second fiddle in her own little faction. Like, first of all, you need to separate Jamie Hayter far away from Britt Baker. Agreed. Like, they need to have Britt Baker on AEW Dark. And I say that knowing Dark has been canceled. That's how far Jamie Hayter needs to be away from her. And Jamie Hayter needs to be dominating all three of these women on her road to like to fucking Jade. Like your your money is Jade and Jamie, one hundred percent here. Tony's gonna hold that belt until Soraya decides she wants it and can stay healthy for in two weeks, or Ruby decides she wants it. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just I, I'll, I don't. I'll say this. As much as I was excited for uh, Jade and uh, Chris Statlander and the change there, I'm like, ooh, okay. Now let's see what she got because we're going to do this. I hated everything about this Tony Storm and uh, Jamie Hayter match because, number one, she didn't even make it out. Her music played, nothing happened. They <laughs> played her music again. Then she just falls out like, like a drunk. Because uh, the, the rest of the outcasts beat the shit out of her. <laughs> it's like, get your ass out of there. All right, now go compete, bitch. And it's like, oh, okay. Then um, the other the other chick came out. I forget her name. She was a former champion as well. Uh, man, I feel bad for not remembering. Riho? Nope. The other one. <laughs> I'm not trying. She had the kendo man. stick. <laughs> I got nothing. Hikaru Shida. <laughs> yeah, that one. Her. Her, yeah. She came out and and helped a little bit. The outcasts were all over the place. But this was a very quick match. It was like, what, eight minutes or something like that? Probably and, three. Oh, damn. Say, I just saw I just saw um, Tony Storm holding the title. This was a, I stepped out to, you know, get down how I get down. And I came back <laughs> in. I was like, oh, shit, that was quick. I was like, what? And, yeah, Storm Zero is cool, but... I, I'm a Jamie Hater guy, and it's like I'm already stepping in this, not knowing what's going on. To see such a quick match and two quick women's matches, uh, I think that says a lot. Again, this is again a uh, step in the wrong direction for AEW, and uh, where we got some improvement in the other other brand. We'll talk about a little later. Um, but yeah, didn't like that. I could have did without it. I, I'm a Hater guy. I think she should have held that belt, and then her and Jade go at it or something like that that would have been much that's more where the money is that's that where the money is absolutely and those are again like you said they're homegrown talents they're really trying to push this outcast thing and it's kind of taking over blackpool combat club or outcast are on everything that they're doing almost everything and i was like yeah i don't need it but hey yeah, like for, for them to want to be like so different, like their two top factions are full of former WWE people. Like Brian, Brian just decided to leave because he wanted to wrestle more and they were still worried about his necks. Mox was just unhappy. Cesaro was like, hey, it looks fun over there. All right, cool. But the outcast, oh man, Tony Storm left in the middle of a title feud 
weird. Soraya just wasn't getting her way. And Ruby couldn't she hadn't stay been healthy. On TV for like, in her defense, she hadn't been on TV for like. Yeah, and Ruby couldn't stay healthy. Are they really out there? They wasn't on let her on TV. Yeah. yeah. Even though she was under contract <laughs> that whole time. Yeah, I uh, wish somebody uh, paid me to sit my black ass at home. Talk about it. Speaking of which, Shit. we are open to sponsorship for Let Me Book the Territory. <laughs> so many sponsors. Hey, you want to advertise here? This could be you. Yep. Oh, corporate shill. 100%. We will have all of this stuff outlined in all your corporate garb if you so choose. 100%. I will wear the t-shirt. Because here at Let Me Book the Territory, our slogan is pay us and we'll sell out for you. Sir or sell, ma'am. Sell. sell. No, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> other than that, yeah, as, as we said, let's get to the fun. Because I, I know you guys are just so down on, on this paper. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying to pick them up. So let's get to the fun. Four pillars. Four fucking pillars. Uh, BA, you you like this. You skipped to the last two matches. So you better bring me some fucking energy and tell me why this match was good. Or it was tell good. me what you like. <laughs> I was about to say, is I'm not gonna go that far, but Jesus it was a uh, it was a good match. Um, Saturday Saints, bro. <laughs> there was a it was a spot fest. Um, I thought it was real cute for all of them to pay homage to their wrestling forefathers. Um, as far as them doing that, like there's a sequence where they all did like the guys that they kind of yeah. opened up the doors for them. And yeah, the, I, I love that. That was that, cute. that was one of the things that I was like. See, I, I can't even be condescending. I, when I like it, I like it. I thought that's that what was, I'm saying. It was cute. I was like, oh. <laughs> but um, thank you. Um, but the spots, like I said, Sammy almost killed himself. I mean, I don't expect anything different out of a Sammy Guevara match where he gets to be in a main event. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was it was a good match. They told a, a decent story in the ring, but the problem that I have with all the MJF matches pretty much until his contract's ready to run out is I don't think he's going to lose any of them because it's, he pretty much calls his shot and has called his shot and nobody's going to has really steered away from saying like, oh yeah, yeah he's probably going to beat everybody and he'll still be champ in 2024 and will wake me up when that happens. It's kind of how I feel about MJF when he's booked in AEW right now. Interesting. I, I'm going to avoid the, the obvious trap here. I'm not, hey man, no, no, no trap. I, I, Free no. zone, brother. Speak your mind. No, I see I see the Yu-Gi-Oh trap card. Yeah, I'm step <laughs> step right around that shit. Black magician. Get on his ass. Um, I'm I gotta say, I love the match. I thought it was really fun. Um it I, I'm not gonna take the same stance as BA. I didn't I don't feel that way about MJF per se because of the signing or anything. I think it's more so because he just got the belt and people who just win the belt don't lose. So it just kind of takes something off of it. But I'm also still curious because all four of those guys can go. You got MJF, you got Sammy Guevara. Um, what's his name? I'm, I'm, ter- I'm terrible with names. Darby. Darby Allen. There we Jack go. Perry. Darby Allen and Jungle Boy. <laughs> I'm not that high on Jungle Boy. I, I'll so get tiny. I like the dad, but. I get eh, not not that great on Jungle Boy, but he can still go a little bit. But I enjoyed the match for what it was. It was a spot fest. It was really fun. Darby did some crazy shit. Sammy did some crazy shit. Uh, and honestly, I'm constantly reminded again. Oh yeah, MJF can actually wrestle. So that's mm-hmm. what's the fun is for me when I see MJF like going for it. Like I don't like the the. Uh, and forgive me for for this but like that Miz style of wrestling most times that's what chicken, that's what the chicken shit heel i mean some of that but it's just like that style it's very slow prodding rest hold safe do the thing yeah and it's not a lot to it mjf will start pulling out some shit you're like oh okay that's that's really on point so mjf want to show you that he knows how to wrestle that's the thing right. like I, I i'm not a sports entertainer i know and, how to do this and honestly i think he has to remind you because he does so much talking and so much heavy lifting on the mic did you like oh yeah i can wrestle too it's kind of like when you know when you meet a woman a nice young lady and 
and she vibing with you and she's like oh my gosh he's such a nice gentleman and he does this and he looks good and he's tall and he's like gentleman. he's like zip and he's like oh shit he brought dick too like <laughs> bam i did baby to the flow <laughs> she's like oh yeah heaven sent that's how mj is like look you y'all forgot you thought just because i was this like, oh no i got this too and he brought it out and it's like oh, okay very fun um the ending of this match cool uh darby allen does a coffin drop on to i think sammy and mjf slides the title onto sammy's chest and then it, um darby lands on it so i was like oh great and he tosses his ass and pins him so like fantastic work they're in between there um sammy oh excuse me mjf asked sammy to lay down for him like kind of a call back to the to the NWO spot. I know we're NWO heavy. Uh, shout out to the BA show. Um, and he was like, you know what? You need this money. Lay down for me. And and you got, because Sammy did announce at the beginning of the match, him and, and Ty Mello are expecting a child. So congratulations on the raw sex, Sammy Guevara. <laughs> um, they love talking about what they do in the bedroom. I love it without saying I, it. I mean, I love That's it. What, is that not what everybody's doing? Anytime somebody has a pregnancy announcement, it's like, hey guys. I'm no, 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 no. I, I, I should hey clarify. Guys, I should here's clarify. my sex receipt. <laughs> right. I should clarify. Um, this is the most tamest things that they've said about their sex life. It's usually Tay yes. Mello is wilding out as far as things she's tweeting or yeah. inferring to on promos and they put a microphone yeah. in her face. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Put the mic in her face. She's like, nur, 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 nur. That's how you got there in the first place. <laughs> pregnant, pregnant. Um, but no, congratulations to them. But he did not win the belt to have some big baby gold. So, unfortunately, but fortunately, MJF is still our champion, the AEW title. And I thought it was a good match. So, Four Pillars match delivered more than I thought it would. I thought it was going to be more hype than anything. And no, I had a, a lot of fun with that. Um, and then the match that i don't know dub if you don't watch anything else just go watch the shoe because you got questions and we why did that man's shoe explode i don't know told you man there was no he didn't take nothing up to it you know what it is i found out i remember it was the misplaced explosion from when (laughs) moxley had to get saved (laughs) by eddie kingston in the death match Remember that was like it was in yeah. it was in it, Matt it was, Jackson's shoe the whole time. The whole time. That makes sense. So that makes sense. Like, oh sense. shit! My That's where it is. is See? Where's Mox and, and Eddie now? Right. See, <laughs> could have been dead. <laughs> How did that get there? It's like whoops. Oh you shit! Know, you know who loaded that shoe? The same Ooh. guy that got Alec Ball. Never mind. Um, guys. I mean, I was going to say Lord Zed, but okay. Yeah. That's it. Um, Anarchy in the arena. Anarchy in the arena happened. It was fucking insane. And it might have been the most fun I had this whole pay per view. Undoubtedly, not Mike. It was the most fun I had. I was skeptical because I was like, I don't care about this shit. But they made me care because the leak came out um your boy hanger man came out with eye patch on kenny the bucks they all did they poses the kansas was playing i was sold they got me from jump dun, 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 you, you dun, just dun. really like kansas that's all, I love say. kansas that's all it is man talk about it. i love it it's the hype it's the whole thing it's pitch black Spotlight hits them. Silhouettes. You uh, see the Bucks posing. You see Kenny I've seen with the, the intro gun. Before, yeah, I know how it goes. See, I don't even know what Hangman does. <laughs> he's just so holding excited. up the ones because he's also a part of the bloodline somehow. We don't know yet. Long form booking, baby. And all of a sudden, <laughs> carry on my son. Boom, boom. I'm like, oh. a minute. I lose my fucking shit. I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. And then they come down to the ring and I thought it couldn't get any better. Then the Blackpool Combat Club comes out of the crowd 
with uh, the singers of what the fuck is a wild thing, violent night, violent riot. I don't know what the fuck uh, they call it. <laughs> Whoever, violent idols. There we go. I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna steal my night bit. But they came playing the song live. Blackpool Combat Cup comes out, and they are just rock. And the shit just starts immediately. Just face punch, face punch, and the cameras just flying all over the place trying to capture all this action. It literally felt like anarchy in the best way, shape, and form. I'm like, who's kicking whose ass? I don't know. Then it just cuts. It's kind of like a super cut of wrestling. Like, you ain't got to wait for the rest holds. Soon as somebody starts doing something boring on this end, they just go to another nigga and somebody's going through a table. Somebody's catching a, a fucking buckshot lariat. It's just, it was so intense. I couldn't stop popping for I was like, this is incredible. And the whole time, these motherfucker violent idols or whatever is still just playing that shit. Wow. <laughs> I think I love you. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, this shit is so good. And it, then all of a sudden, the Bucks must have just got sick of that shit. They was like, this record is skipping. They gave this motherfucker an uh, ultimate super kick party to the face. Picture perfect, beautiful. He takes the dive looking like uh, from dusk till dawn with the band playing on the, the guitar made out of human parts. And just, oh, fuck you. Good night. <laughs> Amazing. And I was like, this is so much fun. And that was like the first 15 minutes. I didn't even mention the fucking exploding Jordan one. I didn't mention the fact that Hangman and Kenny were just outnumbered and just getting their ass beat. But they were like, you know what, brother? I got you, brother. They just turned into <laughs> double dragons and just start beating the shit out of everybody in the Blackpool <laughs> Combat Club before just getting executed. I didn't mention fucking thumbtacks. Oh my God, the thumbtack spot. Worst thumbtack spot ever that I've ever seen. And when I say worst, I mean best. Most violent shit. They put thumbtacks in a motherfucker's mouth and hit him with a Hadouken. Hadouken! Knocked his foot. Knocked the fucking Sonic coins out of his mouth. Incredible. That. Let me let me regain my composure. BA, you got anything else to add to this? I was about to say, after E Ray gets done cleaning up. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Yeah. So I, I agree with the sentiments of. Uh, my comrade E Ray. Um, it was, def- it was a it was a fire match. It was definitely a way to close out a show for sure. Um, not gonna lie, when I saw um, the Wild Thing band and saw Mister Blackface right on my TV screen, I had to, to double look, clutch my pearls, like, hey baby, look at this shit. I had to call my wife in the room, like, y'all, you see what they do it on this shit? Baby, this- baby, <laughs> baby, you see this <laughs> shit? <laughs> right, right, right. Did you think Vince McMahon booking this or something? I was like, <laughs> that shit was wild. Um, it definitely took it me. Was a wild thing. Def- yeah, for sure. Um, I hate you, but I don't. I don't follow that music. I don't know nothing about this band. So I was like, this is some shit they normally do. Somebody probably should have said, "Hey, bro, you should probably wear the white mask right? tonight." <laughs> right. You know what? I know. <laughs> should do that. What, you see what, them, you see them AKs over there that just got in the corner? I'm sure they're not gonna sign off on that, bro. Or at least remove the right. red off your face. Right. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand it's Blackpool, but let's let's and be smart. Like, you know what? I'm a wild thing. Yeah, he <laughs> is, boy. He, I'm sure his Twitter timeline went wild Saturday night. But regardless, <laughs> um, <laughs> outside of that, um, just like I, I, and I think the, the stable, the staple of the Anarchy and Arena match, um, it, it works for me. It worked last year. I love that they kept it a buck with the wild thing, just playing for no reason. Love it was just the, it was the theme song last year. This year they had the actual band just playing it, so, so they cool. keeping the bit going. And it kept so kept going until they, he got executed. It was yeah, like, it's, it's, it love just it. matches, and I hope that Mox is Mox has to be like involved in these matches every double or nothing now. Like that <laughs> sucks for him until he changes his theme music because it's. <laughs> like a it's a thing now um yeah man that's the beauty of these anarchy and arena matches like you don't know what the fuck's going on every time the camera goes to different people fighting it's just people going crazy in the crowd out of the crowd backstage fucking up band members exploding jays stock x stop this madness (laughs) i don't know but um yeah man as far as i'm concerned yeah uh, uh 
I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, uh um Kenny or, probably hooked them up from the oh, he was I'm like saying, hey say, I from, got you these ain't made in China these <laughs> made in Taiwan <laughs> <laughs> Why ain't the jump man ain't why the jump man looking like a like a shack man? Because <laughs> like, right. they got the, real. Why the jump man holding a rifle? <laughs> like, what the right. That ain't Michael Jordan. Right. Um, <laughs> poison. Right. Um, <laughs> but no, you ain't like oh, this, to me, in my opinion, um, if we're gonna talk about this card, this is match of the night for me. Because it was just what I expect from AEW, not in a bad way. If I'm going to cut this on, I want to see the chaos, the carnage. Give me all the ridiculousness. And yeah, that's what it brought to me, man. So this match I actually did enjoy quite a bit. Um, Two things I need to say, and then we'll we'll open it up up for quick questions, then we're moving on. Um, By God, that freaking craziness that was the tax spot. <laughs> they sl- they did like an atomic drop and I feel like I think after was it Matt Matt or Nick I can't remember who with the after Jay exploded he took his shoe off he got a called like an atomic drop or something right onto the tax so mm. his whole heel silver whole heel mm. just looking like he won second place that shit was crazy. <laughs> and then and then he got heel hooked by uh by uh fucking DB. And I'm like, oh I'm my tapping. gosh, this oh, is I'm crazy. Tapping. And then uh somebody caught a, a stunner or some shit face first into the tax, a cutter right into the tax. And then they took tax and poured them into uh Matt or Nick's mouth, I can't remember. And they just what open and the yeah. Motherfucker just flew up and I was like, oh my God. That was incredible. I've never seen nothing like that. ECW. And it wasn't gratuitous deathmatch nasty. It was incredible. <laughs> I was like, this is dope. So I was excited about that. Um, dub, before we we leave AEW, guys, just remember, y'all got a full like 33 minutes of AEW talk. Dub, any questions besides the exploding J? I think it came from Taiwan. Yeah, like where do they go after this match? Like, do they? Are you they go with each other? Like, is this is this forever beef now? I mean, Me. if, if there was ever a moment to be on site, if you put some fucking uh, you sprinkle tax in my mouth, yeah, right. Like, if you that's sprinkle what I'm some tax like, in my mouth, like like you fin topping off a Sunday, and then uppercut me like Street Fighter Six, we got a problem. I think it's, that, it's on that's why forever. I'm asking. Like, where, where do we go from here? This this definitely doesn't feel like a blow off. This feels like, you know, again, a start to forever beef. This is Liu Kang and Shang Tsung at this point. Scorpion Sub Zero, Bison and Guile. Blood. Uh, yeah, you, you would uh, think, but I don't know. I think just because like the Anarchy in the Arena match from last year didn't like it. Pretty much was kind of like they just went off into different stuff. And from what I can see. From Dynamite tonight so far, I think these these groups are moving on from this. In all honesty, I think that is the ultimate blow off. Is like attempted murder, I guess. Like it, I mean, apparently, that is what a blow off is. As we move on into the next, um, the next uh, company, we do see well, some some depictions of people almost dying this weekend. All right, well, guys, that has been. AEW double or nothing. I hope you enjoyed that. I, I tried my best. I know Ooh, that was my comrades were yeah, they were they were they were a little hard on it. I tried to pick them up. But now to shit that they love. We go on to NXT Battleground. Yeah. A six um, match card instead of eleven matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. So we we sneak that in the middle. Um <laughs> guys, uh I need to know. Just all well, actually, before we, no, nah, you know, don't even matter. BA, let me know. Give me a ranking for Battleground. What was your ranking? Oh, like letter grade. Yep. Um, going through the card in my mind. When you finish watching, I'd it, give it. I felt like it was a B plus show. Solid. There was it wasn't terrible mm-hmm. matches. It wasn't like. Super amazing. There was one really amazing match. 
couple great matches and some couple matches where you expected things to happen as they should. Um, so with the one match kind of going over my expectations of what I was going to see, I, the B plus. But if that match wasn't super amazing, I would have gave it a B. Okay. Dub. I'm going to give it an A. I, I love this card from top to bottom. And then like things happened on this card that like I didn't expect. So I appreciated that even more. So it's, it gets an A for me, hundred percent. Okay. Um. So I'm gonna let you lead this one because you're you're the highest on it. I give it like a B minus. So, um, Dub, lead us off. Let us take us into. So we start this amazing card He's off. He's so excited. Right. With that's some bullshit. Something right. that NXT does better than yeah. anybody else. DM this man how much of a hater he is. AEW fans, if y'all out Fast. there. If you exist and listen to the show, <laughs> hit let me book pot and say dubs a beer. <laughs> nah, just fun. Don't do that. I, I, he might I want have to all fight. the smoke. I want all the smoke. Street profit style. Anyways, we start this card off with something that I think NXT does better than just about anybody else, and that is triple threat matches. Wesley, Taker on of all comers, pause. <laughs> Who cuts Tyler me? Bate Who and Joe me? Gacy oh. via pinfall. Um, all the comers, <laughs> newcomers, old comers. I I loved everything about this match, like the the back and forth between Tyler, Gacy getting his stuff in, pause. Um, Never nothing to say in a Bukak Lee match. The finish, if you will. Uh, That's Wesley play. jumping past Joe Gacy off to the top rope. To take out Tyler Bate, Fire. coming back in, hitting Gacy with that cardiac kick. I was like, "This is just, this is just fun. This is what wrestling's supposed to be." I mean, BA, I know you were really waiting for Gacy to get the W on this one, but am, am I right on this one? Yeah, yeah. No one, no one yeah. chose him to retain. BA, I thought he was. And don't tell me I wasn't nervous that he was about to. Like the thought didn't cross your mind at a, a point in this match. Oh, uh, because it crossed mine. Um, I, I mean, at, at, at the way it was booked, and the way the match happened, I honestly thought Tyler Bate should have won. Just the way the match played out. Mm, but same. Same. it is what it is. They want Bukak Lee to, to continue his love of taking on all comers. So All the time. Hey, man. Hey, he's, he's a <laughs> e. Ray, he any different thoughts there? Um... <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna agree with with BA. I thought the way the match was going, I was like, "Oh, Tyler might be taking this," and I and I'm happy for it. When I seen Joe Gacy, and and, and well, I guess that's my other thing. I didn't enjoy Joe Gacy in this match at all. I felt really? like he was out of place. Uh, I, I he I was the him. anchor. I did too. Yeah, but his ring attire. He started with the ring attire, though. Look like he was wearing a big ass diaper. Uh, no, no, no. You're like a ring of You just don't like big niggas, man. That's all. No, I don't. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> don't be hey, hating right. on the big man. Me and hey, Dub, right. like, hey, man, that nigga that season. Right, man. That nigga season. Hate that. Hey, can't relate. I Peloton Poppy though. out here. Uh, anywho, I yeah, I just didn't like the the big uh, diaper Gacy. I didn't like um. The Rock's daughter looking like schism juice. She was like, I don't know what to do with myself. And they just felt weird. They didn't have GYV with them at all. It just was blah. And he just didn't fit. I love the, uh, no pun intended. I love the um, double cardiac kick. I thought that was the one of the best spots of the match. That shit was incredible. Because he, unlike the five-way match where he kind of missed it, this match, he laid out for that bitch and caught both of them niggas on the head like Hah! I loved it I was like that was incredible um also yeah him jumping past uh Gacy out of the ring at Tyler Bate fantastic Tyler Bate move set and this is a pause but pause in advance but dude's thighs are ridiculous <laughs> like his physique is incredible and sorry yeah I'm hating on fat niggas because Tyler Bate's the, the man so I was like, I need him to win that belt. I, I was ready for it. I would have been fine if he did. Um, and then the finish. I did. I thought the finish was a little sour. It was a little soft for me. After y'all did all that crazy shit to end it with Joe Gacy doing this fat, fat hand press, and then 
slowing down for it for the cardiac kick. It just was timed, ill timed. It didn't look as clean, but it was over. So I was, that's fine. Yeah, I was about to say. I think uh, we just unlocked the uh, yeah. E Ray's like silent but not silent hate of anyone that's over the weight of two hundred and twenty or thirty pounds. It seems. Jeez. As as, never mind. It's, it's See, I was about to say. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even going there. It, it don't even matter, guys. It just wasn't. It wasn't. As, yeah, the, as the women still say, his character from heavyweights. For real. As the women said, it just wasn't uh given what it what it should have gave. So yeah, it was cool. It, okay. it it didn't do it for me. But yeah, all right. All right. So good enough. next up, next up on this card, I have a question for both of you guys. I need you to get out your wrestling bingo cards. <laughs> Got them out. Mm-hmm. Did you guys have Noam Dar leading a stable of black people? On your 2023 wrestling bingo card. Um, wait. Question. Can I have wrote it in as a free space? Because as mm-hmm. soon question. as I seen them come out, I had a tweet. My tweet was, "Know him, know him. His <laughs> look look like his heritage was from from LA, and his <laughs> cup was filled with gin and juice." The braids, he had the Nipsey braids. That should have been a telltale sign right there. That he I, had, the, he had the car on last back there braiding his hair. Yes, because well, I'm like usually come a out. cup of gin and juice. He was sitting yeah. on the porch. The heritage just, cup got set out. He, he was ashen. They was ashen and <laughs> ashen out in the, in the heritage cup. Yeah, I was like, you know, it felt that way to me. That Norm Dar definitely smokes black and miles. I, I can't explain it. But he definitely smokes black and miles. Absolutely. I'm, I'm okay with it. The better question is, can he freak them though? Is the question. <laughs> That's the real side of, of the culture. He ain't got to. anybody can smoke a black and white, but can he you got, freak? He got him? he got Jakara right there. Yeah, yeah. That's a good Jakara. Jakara definitely can freak a black and white. Let me chill out. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So British rounds rules match for the NXT Heritage Cup. Um, rounds are a minute apiece. Mm-hmm. They end via pinfall or submission or time or ending. Time. Uh, Dragon Lee was his, op- was his opponent. Dragon Lee got Dra- Dragon Lee and Dijak have to stop taking L's. Um, but we'll, yes. we'll get to that. Nathan it- Frazier's in Dragon Lee's corner, even though the vignettes with Nathan Frazier seemed like they were pushing him heel. Right. And like, I don't know if he just if it's just he sees no Amdaris on smoke on smoke now smoke on sight and fuck that guy, but. Again, another good match. Like, I don't, I don't know, but I liked it, and I, the ending is what did it for me. When Jakar and Lash came out, I was like, "Oh, okay, this, this is weird." And then when they all got together in the ring at the end, I was like, "I, I kind of love this. I, I kind of love this." Ba, did you, did you love this as much as I did? Because I can see E Ray's eyes right now. He hated it. I, you know, I like, he didn't like seeing that white man with his black queens. I mean, shit. Well, no, it, it ain't bother me that much. Like he, he kind of he, he looked the part. Is all I could say. Um, yeah, and like I said, as to to talk about just a heritage cup, heritage cup style of match, and to involve the way they booked that out, like the the bullshit Noam Dar was doing in between bells and shit. I thought that was a cool touch. I had never seen a match like that because you know I absolutely never watched NXT UK. Yeah, so yeah okay but two out yeah. of three ain't bad huh it Thanks wasn't bad <laughs> <laughs> it was not bad match at all but um yeah i the the the, the fact he was getting carried out on his shoulders by by two black women not on the bingo card just like art anderson eating someone's thumb not on the bingo card this year a lot amongst other things that have happened just the halfway point not even the halfway point through this year um yeah I, it didn't bother me as much as it may have bothered others. Is all I'm gonna e. say. Ray, go go ahead, go full hotel on this one. Go ahead, you got mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not even going there. I, I'm going to surprise you. Um, oh. oh, Dragon Lee's entrance is incredible. This yeah. motherfucker freezes time and space, and I'm like, yeah. Wait, what's happening? Threw me off. I'm like, what and is happening? He throws a a low blow or a body shot to a man in the gut. And he disintegrates like fucking Thanos, just punches <laughs> ah, and snaps him out of existence. I was like, that's incredible. That's like the best thing I've seen in a while. And then 
Dragon Lee. Oh, wait, that's fire. Love that. That's a great touch. Um, much like BA, I had no idea what a Heritage Cup match was <laughs> or what the rules were. Um, but yeah, watching it, I was like, I like this. For yeah. some reason, it's to me, it's a little bit cleaner and more entertaining than a pure rules match. I, I, I agree. don't know why everything that I do not like about a pure rules match, I end up liking about this match. I like the little short breaks in between. Uh, like that I was kind of gassed thing. and tired. And then they go back and start wrestling again. I was like, I don't even know what I'm watching, but it keeps me entertained for some reason. So I was rocking with it. Because to me, like the pure rules match, it kind of insults your intelligence as a pro wrestling fan. Like, oh, this is all just graps. And you're like, no, that's not why I watch <laughs> yeah. this shit. Yeah. British Realms rules, they're like, yeah, no, you right. you can throw hands in this shit. You you throw some hands, you can't right. get disqualified. You're like, oh, okay, cool. No punching. I was like, wait, what? That's why you like oh, when Norm you start- Dar was like, Hit him with that back elbow. He's like, I, I just didn't hear the bell. I didn't hear the bell. I was like, damn it. Yeah. That's, that, that's the thing. Shit. And originally, so when it comes to the pure rules matches, it's like, we're it's ingrained in our brains since, I don't know, almost 20 years now, since uh, Nitro was, was out, that before you can do a special move, you punch. <laughs> you got... Punch, punch, True. punch. You oh, the person gets dizzy. Special, now yeah. you grapple. You now earn you grapple. You earn now that you do the special. Move. You can't just grapple, grapple. Like, that don't make sense. He's going to reverse it on me. So, it, instinctually, <laughs> we can't watch pure rules without, like, where's the punching? I need to see somebody get punched in the face. Now, this, on the other hand, it's just like, it's kind of like boxing, but it, it but it's a, di- a elevated level of wrestling. So, it's like, okay, wrestling, then get a corner guy like oh and it's two out of three falls it just adds a little bit to the mystique i thought that was a fun touch so Mm -hmm. i really enjoyed this match um unlike you guys i did not like the ending though um (laughs) noam dar he did come out with his gin and juice look i thought it was nipsey nipsey dar and i was like all right that's cool um but i was like i didn't need lash legend or jakar coming out like what is this but if they do something with it that's fine exactly that's what i yeah, it's just something to do. That's fine. But for it to just come out of nowhere, I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that. So again, I reserve judgment. I don't take points away from it. I just didn't love it. So I was like, ah, it's fine. But the match itself won me over. So still good in my book. Still good. Yeah. Um, Jakara and Lash have been tagging on Level Up. From what I've heard, I never watched that either. But fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> Dub has all this shit on DVR. Yes. Oh, um, but yeah, no, like- he was watching it in Putin Bay. He was like, look. It's like, Dub, I would love to suck. Get out of my face. I'm trying to watch <laughs> fucking level up. I got work to do. Get out. <laughs> E-Rating is a soundbite by Tuesday. <laughs> right. Out of here. Like, Leave me alone, I, married white woman. Get out of here. Mary. Like, I like to bite. Go to your husband. <laughs> you sinner. Get oh, out of my man. face. Adulteress. <laughs> <laughs> oh man Putin Bay don't ever go but go a lot from one dragon to another Ilya Dragunov defeated Dijak in a last man standing match Yes, and Dragunov. if I can think of one word to describe this match violence pain. Oh. <laughs> yeah pain yeah there you go um, E-Ram I'm going to start off with you as our, mm-hmm. our resident Blade 3 expert, how did you feel about this match? Ah, uh, I loved it. It was everything that I wanted. It started off so intense. I didn't even catch it. I think I was getting ready to like eat or something. My girl was like, oh my God, did you see that? Turn it back. I was like, what just happened? Dijak starts, White Blade comes out with his interest and all of a sudden he's just yelling at some random it's some random child some <laughs> parents hold up their child like get them out of here get them out they of here they don't need to see this i was like shit this is about to be crazy i love it and then yeah, dragon Vic joseph definitely saved that by saying like yeah those are his kids i said oh okay that was incredible and i was i was so happy and then dragon off comes out fucking tuning the band up the maestro and i was like oh this is about to be great and 
fucking bell run. They just went at each other. Carnage, like I hadn't seen in a long time. I enjoyed all the abuse, the body sentons, and fucking pump kicks. Just insanity. And then for Dragon Off to end it just by jumping on Dijak's brains. <laughs> Hey, take this paralyzer. Like, oh, god damn. He said, bye bye. I loved it. I <laughs> and then like, for oh, dragging off, stand up at nine. And then as soon as the tendrils off, they're gonna fall back down. Oh, yeah. That's like, that's that's what put it over for me. Yeah. Right? Man, after the so, night. So I don't great. care what I don't care what happens after this match. Yeah. That's he, it. That's how you he, blow. That's how you end the feud. He jumped on Dijak's brain and put his elbow and cheer, his head between the elbow and cheer combination and just, and and Dijak did, Dijak did. Great. He did. I do want to remind you guys that we all picked Dijak to win that match. Um, Cause Dijak has to stop losing soon, right? Yeah, it's kind of like when you play roulette and you see 30 or 15 straight uh, black hits and you're just oh, like, it's yeah, gotta got turn to. red at some point. Yeah. Yeah, like just Dijak exactly and Dragon Lee have to both like stop losing soon. I don't. And Joe Gacy and I, I don't know what Joe Gacy can. He can keep losing. <laughs> I don't know. Y'all just y'all just made brothers. me hate. E Ray made me hate Joe Gacy without even knowing I hated him. <laughs> like I'm Damn. like, Ugh, I don't want to like him. My he is wearing a KO. diaper. He is I was fat. just like ah. The diaper take, I was just like, I guess he did, but like, he it was, was like cringe. a big yeah, baby. I, do, I don't like, like his ring gear, not, but like everything else about Gacy is money. His gimmick um, but, don't bother me, but yeah, sorry. Yeah, but, but moving on. I never um, sent her to Schism Street, just saying. <laughs> Yo, it's E-Ray, the quasi-bad guy, the Diet Coke of Evil, the side god of pod, and I'm here to tell y'all, come check out my show, Binge Flicks and Chill. You never know what you're going to get, but we always talking some good shit when it comes to television and the latest movies. So we want to bring y'all in. We want to make sure you have a good time. You learn something, you laugh, you cry. You might stab a nigga or two. I don't know what you're going to get, but that shit is popping. So come check out Binge Flicks and Chill. And it's me, E-Ray, and I'm out. I would just like to remind you guys one more time that Gallus Boy's on top. Gallus, Gallus boys, boys, who cares? Oh, That's kind of how I feel about the Gallus boys. Can we I'm talk sorry. about it? Let's talk Can about we it. Talk Dub, about I've been trying, man. I've been trying to like buy into these dudes. Nope. I'm like, I'll, I keep falling towards E Ray. Like, I don't understand what they're saying. I don't care. <laughs> All they do is sit around bars and talk shit until you understand Gallus boys on top. Gallus boys on top. Okay. Oh, no. oh. Sure. That's all I get from this shit, point. man. Gallus right. boys on top. Uh, uh, I was just, fresh. I was low key like, I hope the Creed brothers win so I don't have to hear this bullshit on my TV. And the anymore. performance that the Creed, they did a good Julius, job. Julius, man, somebody get this. He, if if ever there was somebody who needed a stable of black bitches around them, <laughs> Julius. And I, and I, they got to go through Ivy Nile. I don't know if Ivy Nile is going to allow that. The diamond by. <laughs> As, as I'm not a huge advocate of, of Swirl Nation, but if this man Swirl had Nation. to get it, had to get it off. I, I'm Dr. Give it Umar off. here, e <laughs> Yes. Dr. Dr. Ure. Dr. Ure. Yes. Swirl business. Donations. Suplexes. 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 Oh, man. Oh, um, my no. God. No, Julius went insane. <laughs> Kip up, German. Kip up, German. Kip up, German. It was just nuts. The the spot that he did, I'm like, that was like six Kip up and German suplexes. Those I'm like, freaks, man. He took his fucking thing off. I was like, this dude is fucking winning me over. Then every time they hold up a mic, he sounds like uh, MGK or somebody, <laughs> like one of those white rappers, Jack Harlow. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, he's gonna get a single push. I was like, "Whoa, Julius, <laughs> yeah. turn the captions off." It's on sight when I see this nigga. Whoa, relax. Um, but no, I I enjoy the Creed brothers. They are so money that I'm honestly like, man, they need to go on. They need to go to the main roster because I can't Low see key. them. They are pushing Gallus, and Gallus is so not interesting. 
They are I just so don't boring. Care. To me. I've been trying to care. I promise the I I've tried. I'm you like win they... me over with either your your mic work or your ring work. Gallus is ne- <laughs> negative two. It's just there. There's nothing to get. Like it's like they're just I've seen the bar gimmick before. And it and it's like the the wrestling the isn't ass. like the wrestling is just like it's hard hitting, but it doesn't have like the fluidity that I love. It's not like a pretty deadly. It's not like a, a high low, like a small guy and a bigger guy. It like it's just brawlish. It's like brutish. And I'm like, ah, I already get enough of that, but a better version of that with the brawling brutes. I don't care about this. And they're the champions. So it's like it's just hard for me to like it. So Dub, tell me why this was your match of the night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say it was my match of the night, but I could watch Gallus and the Cree brothers have matches for the rest of forever. They just seem to work so well together. And that's partly due due to because like Gallus is just so slow and brooding. And the Cree brothers, they're just freak athletes. Like when Brutus isn't missing that Brutus bomb, it's one of the coolest oh, things it, to watch on television. Night. Yeah, I was I was so proud of him. Um and then Julius. Julius Angle, I mean, he out there just working. Julius Angle. Yeah, I, I don't know how many perks he pop in, yeah. but he All he just be out there ready for work. He got him from Jakar, so. <laughs> <laughs> so. Allegedly. Allegedly. Let's, yeah. let's, not, let's not get sued. Um, but I'm, I wasn't mad with Gallus winning. I do want to see them add another tag team in it because obviously they're not going to put the belts on the schism. They're just going to have them guys keep getting title shots. Until they quit, but yeah, they're there to make they're there to make tag teams better until they leave. Period. Yeah, that's it. Make so like, GYV I, a thing again. They can tried. Get, they we, tried to make it a thing again. Can we get, and, can we get hats to say that? Let me put the territory. We should red hats to like make GYV great again. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, for but yeah, I, I would love for them like to add a third tag team into them this mixture of these teams can we uh, i mean sorry I'm, I'm, I'm sorry can we also make a t-shirt that uh for a bet purposes that dub has to wear if he if he loses like another major pay-per-view uh poll or anything like that next event we go to he has to wear no swirl in this world shirt <laughs> <laughs> and can it we is, get it like it, air can we make it airbrush like we used to do t-shirts yeah. back in the day like it's okay. an ice cream okay. cone it's an ice cream okay. cone with like vanilla and chocolate swirling and it's just a big like sensor <laughs> old, red yeah. neck like eh, eh, eh. yeah i would love that <laughs> jesus christ you guys are terrible did. no yeah but, okay. dr um, e raymar dr e mar <laughs> But speaking of swirls, Germans donations. Speaking of swirls, guys, it is Tiffy time. She got her crowning moment as she defeated Lyra Valkyria in what was a much better match than I thought it was going to be. Um, Eray, I, I know you you sent out the text like right after that match started. I was in the pool with strippers. Um, tell me what you thought about that match watching it live. Uh, my first thought was, Dub, did you get your shots? <laughs> and then shortly after, I was like, uh, oh, yeah, so, there's no shot shots to cure what you got. I forgot. <laughs> and I was like, damn it, Dub got to be careful out here. I was like, you got to wear like a, a, a man fanny. But uh, other than that, I thought the match was better than I expected. It did its job because it actually there there came in I came into the match thinking there is no way Lyra Valkyria is winning this belt. Not at fucking no all. Felt the same way. As the match continued to go on and she started doing stuff and she started working the leg, all her legs hurting, selling the gimmick. I started to believe like, could they possibly push her to the top? Like that would be crazy. Because I feel like this I mean, she was a title play. contender in the NXT UK, from what I've heard. <laughs> or so we've heard. Or so he's watched with his own eyes. Bloodshot <laughs> in a dark room. 3 a.m. <laughs> A-Dub's house. 3, 3 a.m. <laughs> <Da-dum. laughs> like, like Law and Order. 
The Gallus match is over. It's time for a Lyra Valkyria match against Blair Davenport. Oh, I'm so tired. A the boys for all the wrong reasons. Right. A the boys all the time. Like, why is it nothing but blue chew wrappers and and code red bottles everywhere? Right. Bloods and Crips. Right. Arn Anderson. There we go. Oh um, man. Okay. Back back on track here. Um yeah. e- BA. Oh, uh, Eri, will you finish with your take? No. I, I guess that, okay. that's all I had. Dub, dub is <laughs> just, don't you silence me, Dub. It's over. He he silenced me. Go ahead, BA. What you got? Uh, <laughs> um to y'all points, that match did go harder than what I expected. I knew and I'm sure everyone else knew kind of watching and in this podcast, <laughs> um, that the epiphanies is gonna epiphanize and they did um she did um so <laughs> so yeah so tiffany did what she was supposed to do <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah booker t was probably the funniest thing in the match to me um, as usual uh booker t i felt like it was a rocket and he just just went up to the moon when tiffany won that title oh um, he, oh he was definitely a rocket you want you would have <laughs> He you was would've, taking off. You would have thought she wrestled in a uh, reality of wrestling with Roxanne the way he thought that. I thought she, he, I thought he trained her the way he was acting. So, um, no, trained her like in wrestling, guys. Okay. But yes. <laughs> See, I yeah. love that people can't. This is an audio podcast. So when we just don't say nothing, I just have you to know what say it. I just had to say it in case the listeners inferred other things because things can always be inferred on this audio media we're on. So, yeah, I will be quiet now. And yeah. Tiffany Stratton won because you're supposed to. Back to you, E-Ray. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, so that's what that was going to be my question. Uh, I wanted to ask, do y'all think that Tiffany should have won? Did they, did they make the right call in this case? Yes. It's- if they um, wasn't gonna do it the way I booked it with, with Cora and Roxanne, then yes, they this definitely is, didn't. Yeah, <laughs> boy, did they? <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was time to put the rocket on her. Um, they tried the Roxanne thing; it was cool for a minute. They know they got a steady, a steady hand with her for the next thirty years. Um, Cora's gonna have her shot, but it, Tiffany, like, they struck fire. But what was interesting about Tiffany is her promo on Tuesday. She struggled. That was tough, man. This I is, felt bad for her. This is why I was saying maybe it was too early. Uh, so I, I didn't feel the same. I thought, you know, in a pinch. I know I you're guess. a big Lyra Valkyria fan. I totally get it. <laughs> Listen, not even. But at the moment, I thought, okay. Well, Doing that shit with her face. With right. the, I was like, I don't get My it. journey. Had yeah, three I, steps. She, yeah, I didn't get fresh any out of the like range. there's like a, a witchcraft golf chick requirement on NXT hey. 2.0, like, because, right? Because elbow fire and Isla Dawn now the main Dawn. roster, right? And like we got to keep the golf circle filled in. This this segment yeah. takes people love this shit, so we got to keep a character that's golf focused here. So, yeah, yep, yep, right. Yep. Um, you're right. I, I agree a thousand percent. Uh, the golf. Uh, it's filled. The quota is filled. So, uh, but I, I was just thinking. I don't know if Tiffany is ready. But the thing is, I don't. I don't know if Tiffany is ready because I, I. Even though she grew, and I had this discussion on Twitter, even though she's grown in many ways, <laughs> I just don't know if it was enough to put the title on her yet. Versus. Lyra Valkyrie, I think she's been in that spot. Maybe not necessarily the most uh, prominent, but she's been in that spot somewhat since Dub told us. And uh, it's as a baby face, you know, you just can baby face it up. As a heel, you kind of got to win people over. And and I know it sounds like it should be vice versa, but technically as a baby face, we don't expect you to do nothing cool. We just like, all right you're the good guy so you just do good shit you said Braun held that bitch for a, a minute being a good guy and we was like fuck this but he did so you could have put Lyra on there and fine and let her go against some 
heels, and et cetera, especially because you lost uh, Zoe Stark and et cetera. But um, I think Tiffany, it just felt a little big for her. The stage felt a little too big for her. But uh, fortunately for her, she is a heel. So she always can lean into like some of the worst shit and mm-hmm. it will make her more entertaining. So um, shout out to her, new champion, Tiffany Stratton. And she'll get better. I sure hope so, but I, I believe it's possible. <laughs> um, now, can we get to the last match? Because we're 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 we need to hit the 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 largest card of them all. Are you talking about my, my homie him? Timothy, Timothy, Timothy Hayes. Hayes, future and, Hall of Famer, and and, uh, and the and his man's. I look. I got to be careful. I can't even. I can't even turn on my TV no more because whenever Trick Williams is on TV, my girls start percolating. I'm like, listen here. Oh, she, <laughs> loves, she loves some, some, some trick really like, <laughs> like the only 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 e-ray gave, gave her the e ray gave her the eddie k look like <laughs> gave her the, gave her the ike turn the only willie you getting it ain't tricky at all it's stick you uh, know <laughs> stick willie <laughs> um, <Sticky> willy. <laughs> He already stole my intro. He, uh, he can't. He, he stole my intro. He can't steal my woman as well. So yeah, um, no NXT for E Ray nah. <laughs> for sure. No live NXT nah, for E Ray. It's cool. I, I, I let You're her. You're gonna be at the SummerSlam Day Party. E Ray gonna be look, just looking around for Trick Williams. Hell yeah. Where you? I'm him. <laughs> nah, um, it's fine. I, I let her have it because I, I have my 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 faves. So you know, I was like, we we've already been in in the presence of uh, um. Dolan? Yeah, them them Dolans. And uh yeah, you know. It I is feel you. Is. No, I feel you. VA's the same uh, way when Nikita come around. I get it. Huh? Huh? What? Huh? Huh? Um mm-hmm. I did see she so, was training in the, today. I did I, see a training pic, oh, but we won't that it. That would I saw it on YouTube. I didn't even see it on Twitter. It's a YouTube. I saw it on Twitter. Um really? anywho. No. Carmelo Hayes versus Big Braun, meaner than evil breaker. The best heel in NXT right now. <laughs> That's right, Dub. The best heel in NXT. Oh, I mean, how many heels are in NXT? We ain't talking about that. He give, just, him, <laughs> give the man his give give him him gay credit. Seat. Uh, There's not a lot. It all Tim and gay seat. <laughs> Scripts. <laughs> his street name <laughs> that's my street name <laughs> my mama called me Reggie <laughs> no no don't call me Reggie you call me Scripps that's what they call boy's me boy's name is Reggie he was born Reggie I'm gonna call I'm him Reggie, Reggie. <laughs> um, what streets he was in the Cirque du Soleil the blue man group was calling you that they don't even talk he said he took a street to get to the Cirque, Cirque de Soleil shows, so I'm from the streets, David. <laughs> um, look, Braun Breaker came out, gear was fire. Love the yeah. gear. Uh, Could have did without the, the saying on the back, or it should have been meaner than ever, not meaner than evil. Yeah, that was whack. But... You gotta I talk love, to his uncle more. Yeah, I, I, the mask presentation, the the tears and the jag. I thought that was all hard. Great job. Uh, Carmelo Hayes came out hometown Boston guy. Too bad uh, Jason Tatum was gonna let you down. Would have known that if you listened to my group chat, Carmelo. But you know, other people want to deny. Your group chat wasn't even listen to you about that. But exactly. Know. But look, when I when I pull up those receipts, they got no choice. <laughs> um, anywho, it's just one of those things. Carmelo Hayes comes out looking like a million bucks. And uh, dare I say this match was Braun Breaker's best match? Or, yeah, no, or close. Yeah. Better or because uh, again, their first match I thought was his best. So this one I thought this one was better. I have to agree. I thought it was better. One A, one B. Um, I don't I don't know. I gotta watch it back. Cause I really popped for that first that first one. It was incredible. This one. Uh, I thought it was well paced. Uh, Carmelo just he gets it. Um, I love I love Braun Breaker's presentation. Um, again, heel Braun with not all that colorful bullshit on. Um, but I will say one thing. 
uh, sans the match at all this did make me think incredible match by the way this made me want to have a much better title change that title get that rainbow shit off of there mm. shout out to mm. that community had nothing to do with that i just don't like i remember the original black and gold title shit was fire uh with the 2.0 rebrand they rebranded the title i think that was a bad idea but fine branding matters hey guess what it's no longer 2.0 change that shit it's like got, three and three point five at this point right you got like <laughs> a whole nother a whole nother champion that don't even like even with braun at least he was like colorful with that carmelo hayes ain't that you could have gave him the purple la strap you, it's so many cool things you can do with the belt but just change it from that goofy colored shit. I hate it. it. It makes me mad. I think if we get a long title run out of them, you'll get some reiterations of that belt, possibly, like to make it more him. No pun intended. <laughs> but um, I like that. Yeah, I just don't know though. Like they haven't done it with anybody, albeit not many people have held the new 2.0 title outside of like Bron and Dolph, maybe, and maybe Tommaso. Or he just fought that, for it and then he it. got sent up. Yeah. No, Tommaso had it. And okay. Then LeBron took it from him. So there's you. That's I mean, that could be that's another reason why too. Um, they don't have they don't have a lot of people that have held it, but in the same breath, devil's advocate to my own point, that's even more reason for them to make some unique shit. So ABA, I agree with you. By by you arguing your own point, we're not paying you more. I'll just let you know. Damn it. So I get more free. Got right. <laughs> more free for me. <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> mine. <laughs> um, I I don't know what else to say about this. I it it delivered. It, I was, gotta, it was what I what I thought about it. Um, I got a question in closing. If nobody else has anything to say about it, okay. um, I think that we can send Brian Breaker to the main roster now. I think that is. I think he served his purpose. No, uh, 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 don't even not, dub. I see you. Uh, I see you, did, you, you did this. You brought this upon yourself. I see you, but. The reason why I'm saying this is the is because after this feud, because he did what he was supposed to do, make make Carmelo look strong as a champ, kind of flip him from the heel to the baby face now. He can go be a heel in, in, in the main roster. I don't know what. I'm sure Dub has his own ideas and thoughts, but now nah, I don't see him being in this being in this space anymore. Dub, I'm gonna go to you because you like you got quite a bit to say after this statement. I just want to say that makes Two times this week, Dub was right. Oh, God. This got sick um, to my stomach. <laughs> because, you know what? I said they should have did this after Sand Deliver. But they wanted to keep around a little bit longer. But the moment they put him back into this feud, I was like, all right. He's going to lose again. And now you just got to get him the fuck up out of here. It's time. Yeah, it's like, time. you, you could have done it earlier, but I get it. Draft. You didn't, you didn't want to obviously draft him and try to, like, elevate him to the top of the card. He needs to go to the main roster, be somebody's heavy, preferably Dolph Ziggler. I said make him um, a free agent. We'll talk about the invasion of the free agents in a second. Yeah. But I don't know. I get, yeah, he just has to go. Because what's he going to do? Take Noam Dar's Heritage Cup? And um, his bitches. No. <laughs> and his bitches. Right. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. <laughs> Braun takes the bitches in the cup. And then Julius Creed. That's that's another thing I gotta say. When they was showing them walk into the arena, I need Brown Breaker to fight somebody staring at him in the back like his uncle would have. Scott Steiner would have absolutely beat up n- nerds looking at him in the back. That's what I need out of Brian. We're gonna be I need a Brown hill. Breaker like to survive the NXT it. parking lot attack. Yeah, that'll you show gotta be that type of bad guy. Yeah. That, well, speaking that, of parking <laughs> lot attacks, can we no. say Dub was right. Dub was right. right. Dub was right. Dub. We're not supposed to be talking about the the shows of the week. And we all said this. We all was like, what's her name? Oh, yeah, we forgot. And then you remembered the name. So technically, yeah. you were right. But technically, we And you got your right, so. props on Twitter. We'll move on. The world knows you were right. Yes. Blair Davenport is back. She's the one that's been attacking everybody. I said it's probably her once I like really looked at it and, and I was the, like, you know what? She ain't been on TV in a while. Was not excited. Um Nobody I know they were booing her and they was like, Yay, we got booze, we got a reaction. 
but they were booing her because just like uh, I and my significant other were saying on the couch, uh, maybe it's, you know, Lamanda Rose back. I was like, nah. nah. I was like, nah, she's still shaking that ass. That legal heat. She's still she shaking got, ass, but. She got that legal heat. Yeah, she's still showing ass, but when they, when Davenport came out, it was like, yuck. <laughs> it was like, all right, well, there you go. Yeah, they didn't do a good enough job of like establishing her before she went away. Like she just had that one, was a triple threat with Roxanne and Mako, and then she was gone. I don't know if she got hurt or what, but. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this much. She can go. Yeah, she can I mean, go home. <laughs> you you, 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 you might got... hate her because, like, you know, she has an accent as well, but. Hey, hold on. Go. Don't make me xenophobic. That's not what we're doing here. <laughs> I was like, it's not her. Alva, again, she just has been established as a character. I think she'll be a perfect heel. She'll fill the void of uh, Isla Dawn, et cetera. You know, we need we need that that golf coat of field, so. That's two. You got two. I'm fine with that. But uh, other than that, it's just I don't know enough. But I'll I'll be fine with it, especially because now Tiffy done won the title. All all the hoes on her ass. All the hoes jocking. Be steady. She's like, oh, shit. Uh, Electra Lopez came out there. All the chicks came out. I was like, oh, they want to beat your ass. So I thought they would have beat Blair Davenport because some of them people got jumped by her. They probably should. Some people more than once. (laughs) I, so I was like, well, that, that's interesting, but I digress. Um, yeah. Anything else that we need to say about that so we can get into the main? Danny call. Palmer's promo was so bad. Man. I mean, it was all into the bad presentation of Blair Davenport. So, yeah. Bro, that killed the whole segment. It was clunky like some Tinker Toys clunky. I'm not I'm saying I watch Level Up every week, but they need to send her back to Level Up. So Dubs Friday nights can be complete. Saturday morning. <laughs> Look, Saturday morning. <laughs> See? Stop giving everybody a mic. Saturday morning. Look, she got the hoots. She got the moves. Let her work. The hoots. <laughs> hoots and moves. Hootie yeah. hoo. <laughs> Hootie hoo. That's the code Good for the goal. killers. <laughs> That's all I need. Let keep it real. It's like it's like Arby's. They got the meats. NXT. We got the hoots. Fine. Great. Watching it. I can't deny that too. I don't that need nothing. Burger is pretty good. That's what I heard. Yeah, I, I don't need any uh mic work from you. Just to stay off of it because it wasn't good. But I digress. Uh, we're done with that. Let's get to my card of the weekend. Noc, as we affectionately termed it. Brunch of Champions, guys. Tapioca Brunch of Champions. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. In the Tapioca. Dubbin Bay. Um, <laughs> Dubbin Bay. Dubbin Bay. Um, right. Guys. I was in full Godfather mode out there. Let, let's 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 make this click. Let's not drag this on too much, but we got Night of Champions to talk about. Uh, I asked BA for the last one. Dub, I need your you to start off. What was your rank? Or your rating for this entire card? Uh, B plus. B A. What you got? That's funny you say B plus. I was gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go the A route. I thought it was an A okay, show. Flip, in my opinion, flip side. yeah. Flip so I thought sides. It was funny. All right, freeway. Freeway got the hood <laughs> on smash. Kind of look like freeway. So I'll tell you. Um, E Ray does I, like PD crap. <laughs> Once for PD cracking, two. They told me PD PD for CZ the back goes. The young gunner in full for free. Sorry. I, I wish early two thousands Rockefeller always get a. That pop. make you who dub? Does that make me young Chris? No, no. <laughs> not <laughs> young Chris. <laughs> not Neef. Not Buck. Not. <laughs> not you just said, keep going. And what's a random random guy in state prop? <laughs> just Oskino? just wearing the clothes. Oskino Spark, sparks. I, I, I give nope. even though I give even though Nori was kind of like not I, attached. I give you Nori, dub. You be Nori. I mean, Nigga. he did have a bitch up for every day of the week and say property too. There you go, Nori. Tuesday. What you call me for? It's Friday. Yep. There you go. I'll take it. Dub is Nori. All right. Well, <laughs> now we got that established. Uh, Dubiega, uh, Night Night of Champions. 
started off with a bang. I will say I could have used a little bit of an order change, but for the most part, I loved it. They Instant started out classic. Started out hot, hot, hot with the Instant Classic Big Gold BBL Edition. Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles. Can, 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 I, can I say something real quick? Can I say something real quick? You're dying to go for it. I am. I am. So, <laughs> so, oh, oh, oh. premature. BA, erupted. BA, you know, you know the Blue Marlin. You know the Blue Marlin quite well. Yes. Um. So my buddy Mike, he has one of those Samsung flip phones, a Super Droid, if you will. Yeah. A Gundam, a Gundam of Droid phones. <laughs> he raised biggest arch nemesis. <laughs> right. They all combined Zwoom. together. <laughs> <laughs> he flipped that shit open. It sounded like Wing Zero. Where's the old spark? The fuck is this? It's a green aura box around it. Um, oh, anyways, he cuts on this match. And like me and him are like, it's like hot tub, bitches, this match. Hot tub, bitches, this match. Like just going back and forth. And he finally decides to cut, cut his phone off. And I'm like, all right, I'll catch the rest of it later. Two seconds later, the DJ starts the ass shaking contest and putting back. I was with my friends. I said, yo, this might be the best moment of my life. I got to watch fire ass match. Got to see some ass shaking. It was great, but anyways, I just wanted to let you guys know that's how my Saturday started. It was beautiful. One one thug tear rolled down my eye as I saw cheeks just clapping in front of me, and then this fire match behind me it was great. All the match. I want, I want to go back to Clinton Bay. Dub <laughs> is all swirled out. Sorry, the i the the ice cream machine is no longer working. This is McDonald's. It's like McDonald's. Hell yeah, bitch broke. Uh, <laughs> But so next year, I, I gotta say, um, instant classic is correct. I watched that match twice. I watched it back first time. I enjoyed it. The second time, I was like, "Holy fuck!" It was so good. Um, Seth, he came out in these big ass ruffles, cheetah print ruffles, incredible. Uh, looking like, <laughs> looking like King from Tekken. That <laughs> shit was incredible. <laughs> He was, all he was missing was a tail and the mask. I was like, this is great. Uh, AJ Styles, phenomenal as always. And yeah, man, they put on a, a, a classic. And I was like, this is so good. And the way it ended with the first, it was, it was, um, excuse me, AJ Styles went for the pedigree, got the pedigree, didn't get enough of it. Um, Seth trying to do the stomp, his knee gives out. It was like, oh man, they're just hitting you in all the right spots with all the right spots. And then when it one, two, three happens, oh man, I was like, Seth won. I was so excited. The crowd was going crazy. They singing a song, and that championship just looks so massive. I was like, that's hard. I love it. So super hype. Um, now, after that, I, I don't even know because my mind was gone. I, my brain was vaporized by the, the BBL Big Gold. I was like, <laughs> well, I, was like, I, I think I need that, that belt. I might have to make a, make a purchase down the road. Yeah, that's on the belt. list. Hmm. But next match, list. <laughs> next match on that card was Trish Stratus beating Becky Lynch with the help of E-Ray's yeah. girl. Yeah. No way. That's what another, I'm talking about. Another doubles rightism. Um, yeah. Because mm. you said some stuff. We were saying, hey, she she could use a heavy, but involve these people and put it in there. We didn't expect the, the situation to happen, but she did win. I don't think any of us had Trish winning. I don't remember. No, not at all. Um, no. so, even even with help, I thought Becky was yeah. still winning. So we were all wrong there. Um, that's something to remember. Also, um, love Zoe Stark's uh, usage. And I love their ring attire. Trish had the yams out. Fantastic. So Trish is still very in very good shape. Yoga has done her body well. On the other side of things, Becky Lynch Loved that jumpsuit. That shit was hard. Reminiscent of Kill Bill. I loved everything about the little Becky Lynch chops and uh, tags on there. 
thought that was super dope. Um, the match was surprisingly good. I actually mm-hmm. enjoyed it. it. It was, even though I don't think Becky's like, or excuse me, not Becky, I don't think uh, Trish is a, is a phenomenal worker. I think she got the spots that she needed to. She sold when she needed to. And definitely got uh, her bell rung a few times as we seen on Monday night with the with the purple jaw. <laughs> she got the infinity jaw like Thanos. <laughs> like somebody <laughs> I'm inevitable. I was like, oh shit. Well, so good match to me. I, it was much better than I thought it was going to be. And then the Zoe Stark involvement really popped me. I thought it was fantastic. And I was like, whoa, is Zoe wearing jeans in Jetta? Like, she's trying to get <laughs> whoa. I peeped that. I'm like, yeah, she got some trouble. Yeah, I was like, that was <laughs> Andrew. I'm surprised they didn't know. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> other than that, any other thoughts about that match, guys? No, not really. Um I I was a fan of the match, the finish, and the follow-up on Monday. Becky just coming out like Zoe, I'm gonna ruin your life. I was like, oh shit, that was that was real. Hey, um, tra- transitioner right into the to the avenue of big things. They continue no. to, to put um, a microphone in front of Trish's face, which I don't agree with. But um, Zoe Stark did fine, and I think transitioning Zoe to a big feud immediately is is fun. It puts her into the main title picture. I know she won't win the feud, but. Hey, give her a chance of some exposure and to kind of work work out the kinks. So, perfectly fine with that. Next match. Next. Gunther chopped Mustafa Ali all the way back to NXT. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bang. Mustafa Ali, he he got some moves in. Like it was it was a good match. Like Mustafa Bang. Ali, phenomenal worker, and. Gunther is Gunther, man. Like he's just an unstoppable force at this point. Ba, are you same same thoughts? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I think it did good things for both gentlemen. Honestly, um, it of course made Ali look way stronger than they ever have made him look since. So he, he got that chop that turned him inside out. Yeah, I mean, you you Max you titty into the third row. You fight with a lion. You you fight with a lion long enough, he gonna bite your ass, and that's kind of where we was at when that happened. But before that, like you said, uh, Ali got some shots in, uh, made the match believable. Gunther sold pretty well for the shots he got in. Um, the match played out at the end as it should have. Um, Gunther should not have lost that belt. Uh, I just want him to pass uh, bitter ass honky tonk man's record, and I'm cool with what they do with Gunther after that. So, um, yeah, this match helped both of them, in my opinion. No he complaints. Chopped him so hard, he thought, I wonder what the weather's like in Orlando right now. <laughs> yep. Let's find out. And I loved his involvement there. I was like, oh shit. He felt like a big deal watching him stroll into the arena. I was like, okay, I see you. Red. And it was just like, straight. Like he didn't play, he didn't play heel or face. He's just like, hey, I'm just here for a while. My chest hurt. No, nah, he y'all got a good medical staff. He came up and said, free agent Mustafa Ali, baby. And I was like, that's how you do free agency right there. You're like right. it worked. I was like, oh, I love this. So very happy for that. Um, maybe that same free agency will get Von Wagner off my TV for as long as possible. Um, but good luck. Uh, yeah. Wait, isn't want... Von Wagner doing a therapy session with his parents next week? Next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to talk about Thank that. You, uh, next. next up, Oscar and the surprise of the evening. Defeated Jane Cena by pinfall. Another oh. one we did not, we all agreed was going to be Jane Cena prevails. Yeah, this yeah, we take we this always, was the shocker of the evening, in my opinion. Um yeah, I didn't yeah, I I didn't I didn't expect this at all for her to drop it in overseas. Okay, so same question posed to y'all. Now y'all got a little more energy to it. Was this the right call? Um, like we talked about the Jade earlier, losing 60 and no. Was this the right call for Bianca Belair? I've been thinking about this since it happened. And at Night of Champions with that crowd. I'm indifferent, bro. I can't. Eat, I don't think I can give a definitive yes or no. I think it depends on what they do with her after for me to give that 
a fair shake. The, of the only hands. reason I would say this is the right thing to do is because Bianca's on SmackDown. <laughs> like at some point, reason. both of those now titles. Got, do... Now we got two Raw. Ch- but so is Oscar. Oscar's on SmackDown. Correct. Is that's she? why I said that's a pretty shit reason. I thought that's I why she's Raw. fighting. That's why she's fighting her. No, because as soon as she came out to do her little celebration of having the Raw title, she came out. Asta didn't say a word with the Joker, Jack Nicholson, Joker ah! hands. And yeah, like. Okay, I'll put, I'll put you like this. This is the right move if next up we get Rhea versus Bianca for that SmackDown title. No, that's horrible, dude. That's weird. You don't, you don't want Rhea versus Bianca? No, not right now. Yeah, that's a whole time. Man. Give me that at Thinking. give me that at dub forty, man. Yeah, like, let's, let's, nah. let's shame dub to death. Give, give me that at SummerSlam take. and Mania. What? Like, give no. me some twice. No. You crazy? Dub, yes, yes, dude. I Talk am. about spoiling the money. I only got like, so much underwear, man. He trying to blow lows left and right. Like, god right. damn. Did bro? we just say Jesus. we seen a match redone? Like, this isn't, and we're gonna get there. This isn't Cody and and Brock seven. Yeah, I was gonna, like I said, do it at SummerSlam and at Mania next year. That's like eight months apart. The right, better but- question is, does does Bianca get any sort of get back opportunity is the biggest question. That's what I want to, because again, she said, I want my lick back. And she got missed it twice. Then the third time, she just rubbed in her eyes. Yeah, that was cold-blooded. Like some big, <laughs> that was cold-blooded. I was rub, like, like uh, She got her good that I, time. I was like, that was good. Like, she, that was some good heel she shit. She literally pulled a, 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 a Chun-Li. He said, uh, 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 <laughs> I was shocked. I was, I, I was low key. Like if we going to have her lose, that's a good way to have her lose because it's off of some dastardly heel shit. Like she didn't get, she didn't lose the title clean. So we're going to lose the title. That's I'm not going to be too upset about that. My, my thing is this. I don't like that. She lost on this card. I think this card didn't need that. Number one. Um, and it felt like really abrupt. I felt like this would have been a b- better serve at probably Money in the Bank. And sure, it could have been against Oscar, but I don't think they needed to redo this here. They should have waited, saved that up, kept building it up, then had Money in the Bank and do it at Money in the Bank. I think that's a much better time to do it because then the women win the Money in the Bank. Maybe you have that person run out and almost try to surprise Oscar and she get missed it or um you know whatever but that just includes a little bit more to it where it's like oh that's a good shocker I don't want to like again the Saudi Arabia crowd was a little weird but I didn't need that here for some reason it just didn't connect with me and I was like mm, I think man. that's low-key why it happened I'm sorry to cut you off but yeah, yeah that's fine. I mean Goodness. that's fine I just I just didn't enjoy it there and and number two, I think somewhat to what you said, I think that it depends on how this plays out for for Bianca. But is she ever gonna get a lick back? I don't. What what is it next for? Her? Does she take off some time now and then reemerge? That would be good because I would like to see what what happens next. Or does she get a rematch and? Then what? Does she lose again? And then Oscar just now I'm, has I'm not a number. big on mandatory rematches. Like, yeah, I'm, so, I'm not big on those at all. I mean, if she ain't say I need to get my lick back, I would agree with you, Dub. But she kind of right. shot. So, so that's the thing. But I, I would say this: if you're gonna do it, you now you gotta go all in on Oscar. Do not let Vince sit there and mute her no more. Oscar, if we hadn't forgot, is the only undefeated NXT Women's Champion. She never lost. Like, like, uh, LeVar Ball never lost. <laughs> so LeVar she just left Ball. the titles. Like, I'm, I'm done. Uh, and then she comes to the main roster and she's pretty much like, eh, whatever. She wins some, she loses some. I want to see Asuka, like, she wasn't even, she didn't even win the title. She was given the title by Becky Lynch. I need to see Asuka now go on a rampage and just be like Queen Asuka now. That's the only way that makes that feel better to me. And maybe Bianca comes back around later on, but I don't need an immediate rematch and I damn sure don't need, uh, b- excuse me, Bianca versus Rhea right now. Cause it doesn't make sense. Rhea just won the title. So it's like, it, it's almost kind of like that MJF thing where it's like, oh, well she just won. So there's no way she's losing. 
Yeah, let him build up. Let her build up a lineage with holding the title before we trying to have the immovable object meet and, the unstoppable force. And I get it. I get it, Dub. It's because Me too. Rhea smoked <laughs> Natalia in eight seconds. So you just like, I want a longer match than that. And it's okay. I mean, but who's next for Rhea? Like, look, Rhea's dominated pretty much the entire roster, except for Bianca. Um, Everybody that's on SmackDown? Oh, she's going to be Zelina again? She's going to be Sonya Deville? You act like they don't have Liv. She can beat Liv, Liv. Liv Hurt. Liv Hurt for a while. Oh, okay. Well, throw yeah, her away. She out. You can beat up Shotzi. You can then you can have uh big back, big pose. back pose absolutely because she's she's next. Big back pose is getting positioned yeah, in that trips spot. Gave her, trips gave her the rub already, so, so, so I'm it's I'm done deal. I'm like I'm waiting for that to happen, but I'm fine with that. So again, there's there's a lot of of moves that's going to be made and can be made, but also Rhea isn't that important in as far as like the women's title picture. We know she's dominant, but she's actually doing the best service. In the judgment day, being there, being the dastardly figure, getting Dom over and and actually making the judgment day that much better. She gives the legitimacy to the judgment day because nobody else wins. It's just her. So again, just have her do that. She ain't even got to do nothing special. That's the difference between her and Bianca slash Asuka. They're winning and they need to win to pred- that predicates their like glory. Rhea is in a whole stable with some dudes and having fun and doing all that shit. She just holds the title because she's dope. So until some other people come back and they're ready for her to fight them, she can just chill and beat them up, have her one-off match here and there, and that's perfectly fine. But here's the thing. Y'all talking about you don't want Rhea versus Bianca, assuming that Bianca's going to win. I would say you get that to me at SummerSlam and Rhea wins. No, that's the whole point. If they have the match, I know Bianca's not winning because Rhea just but got the you, title. But then you give it to me again at Mania, and you you build the Black John Cena where they've always built up a John Cena. You ever go on a run? She up, wins man? the What's Rumble or Elimination Chamber or something like that, and the, you know, and then you she gets like, a, a moment. You sound like the dude that got the girl's number and just like, "Can we fuck right now? <laughs> right like, now? It's too fuck soon. Dinner. Fuck right. Netflix and shit. Up. Right you now." Need- P&B. He didn't, he, he didn't awesome. even hit her with the, what you're doing. He didn't even hit you with the WID text. He just like, fuck. Yeah. Right. He didn't hit her with this emoji, right? Here. Yes. <laughs> Donut. <laughs> Droplets. Finger. Whoa. Lips. Wild boy. Peach. Wild boy. Right. <laughs> Egg flat. <laughs> wild boy. We don't Today need we don't need no place. pizza, duck. We need no pizza. We got food there. Food <laughs> <laughs> okay. is a wild place, guys. Um, so there sorry. is. All right, next. Oh, that, that cameo's pizza was hidden. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stay on chicken. Stay on, on chicken Alfredo tapioca pizza. Boys. <laughs> chicken tapioca Alfredo tapioca pizza. Boys. Plenty of Alfredo sauce everywhere. Jesus. Um, um, <laughs> do we so want to talk about Rhea? <laughs> we already did, Dub. Keep up. Okay. All right. So it's much tapioca over. on his mind. It's Eight his seconds on on her birthday. Happy birthday, Natalia. You're taking the L. Here's a gift for you. L. That was hilarious. <laughs> and I ain't talking All about right. Louis Vuitton. They love embarrassing her. <laughs> I don't know what she did. I cut the cheese. As they say, she the sins she of the father. I don't know what Anvil did, but <laughs> she paid for it. Exactly. All right. Uh, All right. So now we get into our main events. Um, we got Brock versus Cody. Cody did the pass out finish. Um, did y'all like this match? More than more than I thought I was. I agree. I, I liked it. it when they started it talking about like Cody, Cody had the bionic, the bionic titanium cast. It looked I was like, like some like fucking carpal tunnel thing that I see like old ladies wear at work. <laughs> I was like, I think it got the Mega Man cannon or some shit. What's going on? He here? needed that shit. If Cody he ain't have it, is a cybernetic organism. Like, I think at this future. point, I it's thought fair Cody to say. at one point said we can rebuild them and make them stronger. And I was like, wait a minute, Cody Rhodes is not the six million dollar man. I have He's a turn into it. Let me show you. <laughs> like, uh, okay, cool. 
cool. Yeah, they just building that story, man. He just this is just a chapter in the Cody story. Okay. So let me ask y'all this: uh, We kind of knew what was happening. We knew Cody wasn't going to win, but they gave him they gave him an out. It's kind of weird that he passed out from a Kamora, but I get it. Pain, cool pain tolerance. He wanted to win at that. Yeah, not uh, everybody the Ilya Dragon on. Do we no. get Cody and Brock three at SummerSlam? I think you get it at Money in the Bank. And I would say if Money in the Bank summer. wasn't in London, I would say SummerSlam. Exactly, and that's why I said it's going to happen at Money in the yeah, Bank. Yeah, but they because it's, at, people it's in London, in London yeah. Because they, they're probably thinking, not giving them Drew. So I was yeah. thinking, I thought it might be too soon because it's only a month away, and if he had a broken arm, they were going to try to give him some time nah. after that. He just re- he just wrestled after four days after allegedly breaking it. So I think that gimmick's kind of dead as far yeah, as I mean, but then he just Cody wrestled a hell in a cell match with a broken titty. Yeah, outside and, of his head getting chopped and up. And then he disappeared for a, a, a day after breaking his titty. He wrestled a hell in a cell match. Right. You think he's he not gonna wrestle four wrestle weeks after arm. break? You think he's not gonna wrestle four weeks without broken arm? What? After getting tapped from, I don't know. Okay, well, it was on site on Raw. Yeah. He said, it's, "I will show up to work every week." Yes, and I'm. It's down. This look, look, is this look, is look, Cody, look. man. This is All what right. he do. Okay, when you well, decide to show up to work, Cody I'll beat in the bank. your ass. Got it. Cody, Cody in, the, in bank. the bank, man. I don't know what's gonna happen at SummerSlam, but Cody in the bank is. I'm. I'm I put money on that. Okay. Well, um, yeah. I, let me put I, you I, like this, E. Right? Yeah. Like, you definitely don't want to put Cody in the money in the bank match, and you have to have Cody over there. Correct. Exactly. Great point. I guess. So why not, you know, have him 75% healed up and then well, ha- put slay him in, the beast? Because put him in Money in the Bank and just have him do a decent job and lose. Instead of having – because you don't need to do a lot with your broken arm. We get it. You got a little cast on your arm, and you don't got to face Brock. That's what I'm saying. And then he he didn't – he couldn't win. He might be in the final four, or maybe he's in the last eight of the money in the bank and he get eliminated because of Brock or something. That hurts him. That's that hurts him worse than losing to Brock, in my opinion. Than to lose. I mean, those are all, I mean, those are all, let's be, let's keep it a buck. The most of the fodder of the money in the bank matches are going to be people that have never been in the main event space. Right? No. Is that fair to say? So, I mean. I mean, it's Nakamura and Ricochet right now. They both main evented title matches. Yeah, I, say, I should say uh, people that are on, that are on a trajectory to be in the main event space. From what we've seen and presented again right us. now, it's Nakamura and Ricochet. I don't know if they're on a trajectory to go into main event space. Thank either. you. Either that's my point. Is you have Cody, who's been prominently featured since he came back from the titty surgery. All of a sudden, oh yeah, never mind. My, my bad. I'm for some reason I'm thinking about uh, Royal Rumble. Well, I was I, like, <laughs> that's how I was like, bro. On my brain, I'm like, I was just like, I don't I'm like, know, you can just man. come in and like and be the final. That's why I said be the final. I forgot yeah. <laughs> only so many spaces. So yeah, if it's only five people, no, no, no. Cody shouldn't be in that. You're right. Agreed. That's not for him. Not no. not at this stage. Nah. Um, but I get where you're getting at. But I, I mean, it's I, I guess it, yeah, sure. It makes more sense for them to get rid of this and be done with it, and Cody going to something fresh at SummerSlam because I have a feeling Cody's gonna be in these oh. random feuds until WrestleMania, pretty much. Probably. So where he this is what it is. Story a year yep. later because the because as as we're going to the last thing we need to talk about this evening uh the bloodline is imploding so i feel like that is now all the opponents that we need for (laughs) for uh roman reigns for the next seven months that's a good point there yeah i didn't think about it like that roman versus jimmy roman versus jay roman versus solo done there we go. Yeah. And some iteration. And, and, and then he probably whoops all. all they asses and keeps the belts yeah. through and each then, of them fights. And, and lo- then he somehow loses Paul Heyman a part of it. And basically he has to be completely alienated. And then that's when Cody is like. It's time to finish the story. Cody, that's right. Cody. He was like, because I, I, he was like, you didn't beat me. Give Solo me and the bloodline me. beat me. So that's how he can challenge him and get it over. So I'm, I'm holding out hope for that. But with that said, um, yeah, there was an implosion of the bloodline because I, first I have to, before I even get to that, I'm burying the lead. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens came out in Jeddah and never been there before. I I never thought I'd see Sami Zayn on a card. Sami Zayn came 
dressed in in the garb, traditional garb, and speaking Arabic, and it was amazing. I was so excited. I was I was so hyped. I like actually felt the chi- the feels for this one, and I was like, holy shit, super dope. Um, did y'all care about that at all, or was that just me? I was just super. No, I, I loved it. Like you could tell, Sammy was like he was really in his moment there. Like and they they embraced whole weekend. It. Yeah. That was I, I loved everything about that moment and like I love that even Roman was standing there like what is he even saying and yes no one told him it was great perfect mm-hmm. like play off of that and it wasn't like he wasn't even trying to like cater to us in any way shape or form like the American the uh re- other wrestlers he's like no this is for the me and the people and he just mm-hmm. giving it up and I was like I love that then uh the match starts fantastic they they going back and forth great stuff. It was a typical Roman match. He's giving up all the stuff. Solo looks fantastic. A million bucks that they built him up to be. Uh, Kevin Owens, what more can you say about that man? He's great. Him and Sami Zayn just work so well together. Anytime they're in a match, regardless if it's friend or foe, it's going to be a banger. This match delivered, and then things got crazy. The Usos that were ordered to stay their ass home left the country snuck out <laughs> and they, they know they was on punishment snuck out the house and then crashed the car because they super kick party like like they were violent idols <laughs> he gave <laughs> solo sokoa their brother a super kick to the face knocked them out and cost him and roman the titles roman spazzes out sammy and KO sneak out of there and they laugh and they they joyous. Roman, well, no, you're very a part of it. Oh, After okay. they super kick solo, Roman comes in the ring and tells him to get out of there and mushes Jimmy in the face again. There's only so Jay many times in the you face. Can, Jay, you're right. There's only so many times you can mush a man in the face before you get super kicked. And right. that's what happened. Jimmy pulled the trigger on that super yeah, kick. Said, and Jay being the Stockholm Syndrome guy he is, why you yeah. do that? Why you do that? You Jay, know Jay just trying to keep the, Jay just trying to keep the family together. At this point, Jay Uso is like uh, the Jackson's mother. Like Jackson, father, he's just a mom. He's just like he's just, like the youngest will, child that don't understand. This is just what happens when mommy and daddy fight. You can't do anything about it. You need to just go to bed. <laughs> I think he does other things like why well, thanks BA. <laughs> like, thinks that he can any more behavior, stories can from save me. something. <laughs> you alright? But they right. can't. I'm okay. I this has been another session of BA's <laughs> BA's therapy. Um I'm sorry, mama. Oh, no. I'm sorry, mama. I never meant to hurt. Um uh, we have my toy box. Um no, this is <laughs> this is definitely one of those matches where it was like the the pieces helped build to the whole. And I was like, man, this is incredible. It was already good. They already had all the pieces there, the characters there, the tension. And then when the, the super kick happened, then the mushing happened. It was like, oh, it was like, I wouldn't let that nigga do that to me, dog. dog. <laughs> and he was like, oh, and he was like, this is my brother. Wow, and <laughs> and let him have it. it was like, yo, why you do that? He was like, you should have did this a long time ago. Then he hit him with another one, another one, and then that was the part that sealed it for me that he did it again. Yeah, he was like, nigga, I'm I'm fully committed. That's like, and he said he was the tribal chief, man. Yeah, he was like, Woo, look at me, look at me. <laughs> and then he got had to get Jay out of there because Jay didn't know what to do. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> It, it, Jay was like Kale and uh and Keenan and Ke- Ah here it goes. Ah, here and, he goes. Had, ah, and he had to walk out. So I was like, cool. He left. And that's when they got the win. And now they left us like, what is gonna happen Friday? We are on the edge of our seats. Um Solo, Jimmy, Jay, Roman. There is going to be consequences, and we gotta see it. So I can't get enough. I'm excited for that, but that is it. Um, guys. So much. So much. That so much emotion. Just oh wrestling. Just wrestling. 
Um, anything else that we that you want to get out of here before we get out of here? When it's done right, there's nothing better than professional wrestling. And that to build up to that scene and then that scene, like everything done right. Full explode. That, yeah, full explode. That that's yeah. when that's when the shoe should have exploded right there when Jimmy kicked Roman. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Just like <laughs> like what was that? I'm sorry. That was that was the fury of the gods. That was and ladies and gentlemen, that is called a comedic callback. You're welcome. Good job, Dub. Um, I'm, it's not even worth even adding a joke that I had in there. So I'm going to close. Guys, this has been another fantastic episode of Let Me Book the Territory. Again, we told you, if you listened all the way to the end, we're going to make sure we cover ROH. So after we tell you where you can find us, we're going to do a whole ROH breakdown. You just wait. Um, Dub, let the people know where they can find you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Embrace the Turnup podcast is finally coming back next week. I don't have my in-home studio set up, but we're going to go digital. We're going to recap every single story from Puddin' Bay that we can tell that won't get people fucked up. So not a lot. So not Jesus. much. All right, just tell me <laughs> a in a group chat. Tell me in a group uh, chat. Cause... A lot a lot happened. We might recap the stories and change a lot of the names and if you, you know, if you got me in a group you know, chat, you know. I'll tell you, I'll tell you who's who and what's what. Other than that, Twitter, Instagram, ADUB1220. Hit the follow button. I'm going to fuck up your algorithms with smut and wrestling and hip hop takes. Not necessarily in that order. Oh, that's one half of the nasty boys for you. Thank you, Dub. <laughs> VA. Let them know. Uh, you already know y'all can find me running. The uh, Twitter handle at Let Me Book Pod. Um, all the tweets. It's all. Be uh, my, I gotta give a shout out. All shout be out be to my fellows this weekend, <laughs> specifically my brother E Ray. He held it down greatly. Um, this is a busy weekend for all of us, so E Ray did a lot of heavy lifting more than he typically does on the handle because uh, he's usually head running his own shit. So thank you, E Ray. Um, but outside of that, typically you'll see me there. Also, just released episode three of the B A Show, breaking down. Speaking of the the insanity of Double or Nothing, the perfect show to kind of couple it. Halloween Havoc '97, <laughs> very much similar, like to this Double or Nothing show. Some fire ass matches, some matches we were all scratching our heads at, and then a crazy psychopathic ending. Tune in to hear our breakdown of it. Outside of that, <laughs> burr, 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 is all I got for you, fellas. <laughs> Guys, and me, E Ray, the quasi bad guy. You can find me at E underscore R A Y underscore the bad guy on the Instagrams. You can find me uh, on Twitter at E underscore R A Y the hipster. Also, uh, Binge Flicks and Chill coming back next week with the beginning inaugural kickoff second season episode wakanda forever talk about black panther nigga. uh it's, it's gonna be dropping next tuesday uh also you can find me at an audible ruckus this coming saturday so listen to it and uh get to it other than that guys i mean i think you guys know how this goes uh like ba says uh swirl the world like Dub says, <laughs> like Dub says, oh, I need some tissue. And you know, sometimes you got to let the madness wash all over you. If it's too sweet, deal take with a, it. Take a bath. <laughs> and we're out of here, guys. Get oh yeah, wait. It's a whole here. thing of uh ROH coming right at you. Never. <laughs>